in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I'd like us to read it together. It's projected. One to read. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that he should do. And the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. There is a thing that the Lord says to do. And he says that when you do that, the glory of the Lord surely without fail will appear the testimonies the mighty things that god is doing you see a miracle is not magic are we together now there are exact keys that produce these effects and for as long as you continue to play your part then there is no devil that will create another testimony i want you to lift your voice and say lord i'm ready to do whatever it takes to cause the glory to be manifested in my life lift your voice and pray Lift your voice and pray. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, oh God. Whatever it takes to see your glory, to see your power. Pray. Make sure you pray. desire to see your glory in our lives please pray there is a way the glory of God can be so real in your life we are praying shala prakatu sebriyata Fill me up till I overflow. I wanna run.
sing it as a revelation. The light shines in the darkness. Yeah, oh, and the darkness comprehends it. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Yeah. Yeah, oh, and tonight, darkness trembles in your holy light. One more time, lift your voice and sing it by faith. Let me give us a prayer point. Lord, teach me your ways so that every darkness in my life will flee. Teach me your ways. Lift your voice and pray. Teach me your ways. I don't want to shadow box my destiny, guessing and hoping I am right. Teach me your ways. Teach me your ways. He says, and the light shineth in darkness. There is a light that can shine and bring to end every darkness there is a light that can shine please pray inside outside online teach me your ways show me your presence lord do not hide it from me show me the mysteries of dominion show me the mysteries of grace show me the secrets of the spirit a very serious prayer point teach me your ways light me Lord light me Lord light me Lord like a candle light me Lord light me Lord light me Lord like a candle light me Lord Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle, light me, Lord, 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 light me, Lord,
Father, tonight we ask you to help us. We have come to receive. We have come to grow. We have come to rise. We have come to be blessed. We have come to access the keys of power, the keys of dominion. We have come for nourishment. And I pray, O oh God, that by your spirit you will bless us tonight. Our hearts are open, our hearts are humble, and we are ready to receive. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. I want us to especially appreciate all those following us online. I think that um, we need to let them know that they are part of us. Go ahead and give them a big God bless you. All those following us online. Praise the Lord. And for those outside, I'm aware the weather is uh, quite cold and um, it was drizzling earlier on. Thank you for your understanding, your sacrifice and your patience. Let's honor them, those inside. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Extraordinary fruitfulness. I want to challenge you tonight. The Lord put a very fiery message in my spirit. Extraordinary fruitfulness extraordinary fruitfulness Genesis chapter 12 extraordinary fruitfulness one of the things that God has been doing in this place according to the word he gave us this year a year of triumph is that he's been guiding us precept upon precept line upon line helping us to understand the systems of the kingdom let me tell you something one of the best ways you can bless a man is enlightenment one of the best ways you can bless a man is not like we usually say it's not to give him a fish or to give him money or give him a, a shoe or a dress all those things are mundane they are carnal they will come and pass a thief can steal it are we together now but enlightenment is intrinsic is lasting it will never change when you enlighten a man to enlighten a man is to create illumination to help the man to access knowledge and understanding in fact let me digress a bit before we start our teaching for tonight i want you to write three words down i was contemplating on these words and thank you holy spirit i remember saying that i would share it with us knowledge understanding wisdom these three things we have confused them but they are not the same they work together like the threefold cord that cannot be easily broken knowledge understanding wisdom knowledge means um, the gathering or access to information when you are talking about knowledge you are talking of access to information not necessarily benefiting from it just access to information the moment an information comes to you capable of changing you is called knowledge now understanding is different from knowledge in that understanding talks about comprehension not just access comprehension the fortitude to comprehend the moment you are talking of understanding understanding talks about comprehension a comprehension of the underlying principles that are responsible for that outcome listen nothing ever happens on its own in this earth nothing ever happens evil or good nothing ever happens on its own hallelujah miracles do not happen just like that tragedies do not just happen failure does not just happen success does not just happen the anointing does not just come people don't just backslide there is always um certain operations that are initiated whether in ignorance are we together now if i kick this speaker by mistake 
the pain will not refuse to come to my leg and say i think it's a mistake as far as the system of pain is concerned i did it intentionally are we together now so in ignorance we have activated a lot of spiritual laws and discoordinated them and we have become victims victims of the interplay of those laws it's like cutting a naked wire and putting it on your head by mistake when it's raining now whether you are aware or not the wire will not excuse that mistake will it shock you yes understanding the bible says with all your getting get understanding we celebrate knowledge so much but let me tell you knowledge without understanding is the same thing as not knowing it at all the lot of one who just has knowledge without understanding and the lot of one who does not have knowledge at all is the same their destinies will eventually be the same doom so it's not enough to access knowledge as good as it is access to an information capable of changing you is not enough you must be able to understand the dynamics of its operation this is where understanding comes in gathering the ingredients to make rice does not produce rice it shows you that there is a potential for you to enjoy delicious rice but with the availability of that ingredients you can mess that entire you can waste those ingredients to look like they were not there because there is no understanding it is understanding that will tell you when to apply what one careless mistake and you produce something else that's how life is it's not enough for us to just have knowledge i know i know i know that in the economy of god people should be blessed i know that people can be anointed yes i'm aware i know that people can grow i know that demons are real i know that restoration is real i know that tithing and offering helps people to be blessed that level of knowledge has too much vagueness there is no comprehension of the dynamics Tithing blesses people, but what is the operation behind it? Restoration is a possibility, but what is the key that activates it? Rising from glory to glory, excelling in the midst of recession is a possibility. Rising without any support, uncle, auntie whatsoever is possible. But do you understand the dynamics that activate it? Favor is a provision in the kingdom. But do you have do you have an understanding do you have a comprehension you see let me tell you something anything you cannot reproduce again and again you do not understand it's as simple as that it is possible to have a short-term result based on pure luck pure luck you play football by mistake and it's cause a goal it's still a goal but you may not be able to repeat it again an example of that rice you can mix nonsense and by mistake things just fall in place and you produce a delicious meal but you cannot reproduce it again now let me tell you something many believers including spiritual people are largely celebrators of knowledge celebrators of access to spiritual information oh i know the book of this and that and that it says this should happen and they say wow what a an intelligent quota of scripture Cain and Abel had access to the same materials but their combinations produced an effect that brought war to one and made another person's sacrifice acceptable you must cry for understanding you must cry for understanding and then wisdom talks of application you see that knowledge talks of an acquisition of information useful information strategic information understanding talks of the comprehension of the dynamics how to make it produce result then wisdom is now the experiential application of what you know understanding a thing and not having the commitment to apply it until it produces result is still nonsense Bible tells us that the word of God can be made of non effect it says the word did not profit them those who heard it 
not being mixed with faith not that what they had was wrong but it was not mixed with action responses of obedience to validate that they believe god please pay attention to what i'm saying very simple keys but they are responsible for the pain of so many people very simple keys but they can be responsible for the retrogression of a man for ages hallelujah so knowledge talks about the acquisition of information understanding talks of the comprehension the dynamics the working principles that produce that result so you are not just seeing an effect or whatever it is you understand the underlying principle and then wisdom is the ability to apply it so that you now get a tangible result knowing that fasting and prayer will help you grow that's just understand that's just knowledge knowing what in fasting and what in prayer makes you grow is understanding then engaging it sincerely and passionately so that your life becomes the result of all that gist is wisdom you can know it you can teach it and never walk in it now this is the challenge with many in the body of christ there is hardly i have i've said it again and again that i am i don't think that the body of christ is in ignorance the challenge of the body is not ignorance by the grace of god we have gone past the realm of ignorance there's almost no dimension of the system and the realities of the kingdom that you bring to the body of christ that people will be shouting as though they've never heard it no it may just be presented in another way maybe more intelligently or more comprehensively in more detail and clarity articulated more more intelligently but generally they understand they have an idea that such a dimension is in the kingdom but very few people are able to walk in it and god has declared for us that this is a year of triumph i don't want you see knowledge is to know understanding is to hear the message wisdom is to engage it and then you see the results in your life if you don't see the results in your life you will be frustrated first in the secret and then later on the frustration will so build you cannot hide it again it will become clear that this thing is frustrating you like many people are already giving up this is half of the year already and many people are just packing up and saying lord this thing doesn't work no you're not understanding it is what makes it look like it doesn't work i can switch this mic off and, and think because i switched it off it doesn't work no there is a system knowing that you can use a mic to amplify your voice is just knowledge understanding the dynamics of his operation a comprehension of the same that's understanding then switching it on and using it now qualifies me to enjoy the blessing i can hold a mic i can draw it i can snap with it and never amplify my voice please i want you to be frustrated um not i don't mean it in a negative way but i i want you i think a better word is to be dissatisfied with acquisition of so many spiritual informations with less than 10 percent of them experientially manifesting in your life nobody works well under such a condition hallelujah you must cry for knowledge it's better for me to know god 10 percent and have an experience of him seven percent that's an a student in the spirit because you are gauged based on what you know than to claim to know god 60 percent and your result shows two percent that's a very terrible situation some even claim 90 percent and the result is one by the one percent the experience vet your spiritual life to make sure you are really getting this thing if you are not getting it stop running retreat and find out where did i miss it i've just been acting acting without understanding lord where have i missed it because you see 
life will test you and force you to reveal whether you understand this word or not hallelujah but the bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not it is my desire from the depth of my heart that many of us are going to begin to produce extraordinary results in our lives don't let anyone ever fool you that it does not matter sooner or later you will see that god's obsession is in our bearing fruit hearing john 15 verse 8 hearing is our father glorified when you bear much fruit right so shall you be my disciples that is the proof that you have been listening to me sisters if you give birth to a baby and you've been breastfeeding this baby every day for one year two years three years and then the baby cannot walk cannot grow cannot talk what happens to the mother do you celebrate the child and say it's all right i know you are coming up no you know there is a problem so when you have been taking the milk of the world the meat of the world the bones of the world and eventually no growth no result no transformation something is wrong something is wrong there is a difference between the weight in faith and the weight hopeless waiting that is as a result of you're not even knowing what you are doing are we together like a farmer plants he knows by the dry season there's a bumper harvest waiting for him so he waits in hope he waits in faith but someone who never went to the farm if he starts buying bags waiting for september that's not a wise man please learn this nothing just happens everything that must happen in your life and my life will require you engaging the mysteries of the kingdom engaging the mysteries of the kingdom not random engagement engaging the mysteries of the kingdom you understand the mysteries that have been apportioned to deliver the results you want the results you want hallelujah let's get down to the business of tonight extraordinary fruitfulness one time jesus was on his way doing his father's business and the bible says that he saw a fig tree and the leaves were green it looked very attractive and then the bible says that jesus came very hungry he came hoping to find something to eat and when he came in hunger he saw that tree blossoming yet there was no fruit and then the bible says he cursed the tree cursed it and spoke over it that no fruit will grow there again the bible there shows us how it grieves the heart of the father to see a believer a ministry a family a people an individual who cannot produce evidences that validate that god is alive fruitfulness is a big deal to god fruitfulness is a big deal to god it's not just a proof that you are growing fruitfulness is a sign that god is not a liar his integrity is at the mercy of your fruitfulness to be validated here on earth that he is not a liar god is a god that expects fruitfulness he gave a parable of the talents matthew 25 he gave unto one five two and one he expected multiplication he expected fruitfulness the first manifestation of the blessing that he gave man is be fruitful are we together not just subdue not just have dominion be fruitful it was not a suggestion it was a command meaning i have put in you all the resources that will take to produce a life of fruitfulness genesis chapter 12. now the lord had said to abram 
This is the Lord having an encounter with an idol worshiper whose life is about to change. Who will epitomize greatness for the believer? Who will become the portrait of God's idea of greatness? A portrait of God's idea of a blessed man. A portrait of God's idea of success. A portrait of God's idea of a balanced Christian life that is both useful to the advancement of the kingdom and at the same time to humanity. He says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. Verse 2. As at this time, this was, this was not yet his experience. It was God's proposal to him. Come out of a system and submit yourself through a season of dealing. And if you successfully pass through that, this will be the result. Verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3 and then we'll stop there. And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall how many? all the families of the earth be blessed in you through you with reference to you as a foundation as a cornerstone the entire race the entire globe will be blessed now i like us to observe certain things here god meets an idol worshiper with his philosophies with his ideas are we together now having a little influence you would call him a local champion he was not a weak man he was not a failure as it were an idol worshiper and then he tells him let's go to verse one again abraham number one your name is wrong number two your life your philosophies everything i thought he would just beat him and say abraham i have great plans for you the thoughts that i have for you even if you know it i mean he said, Abraham, the first requirement will be to leave your status quo, your system. Listen, in the economy of God and in the dealings of God, when God begins to do business with a man, he never uses you as you are. Please understand this. You come as you are, but you are never sent as you are. You come as you are. And then the first thing God proves in you, is humility and meekness the beginning of the dealings of God in the life of a man the, the starting point is when God sees that there is sufficient grace for humility and teachability this man was not a failure this man was a local champion in his own respect an idol worshiper a diviner an invoker of the heavens could manipulate strange powers to his advantage and here comes a word from a deity who calls himself the god of the hebrews and he says abraham get thee out you know how painful it is get thee out abraham i know this philosophy has worked for you but before i introduce a higher perspective get thee out I preached a message years ago from this scripture called come out of your father's house now many believers in the kingdom please listen carefully many believers in the kingdom when we come to God number one we come with our pride hoping that we are okay by ourselves then number two we hope that he will only add to what the garbages that culture the garbages that our mistakes our failures have given to us and we say lord i am here um let's just continue the classes and god says i don't know who that lecturer was but when i come to you even if you have been 10 years in this business my first requirement is that i isolate you you have to come out of that system you have to come out of that way of doing things we're talking about fruitfulness let's understudy abraham very carefully because the bible tells us please give us isaiah 51 and verse 1 and 2 the bible gives us an assignment that every time we want to study success fruitfulness greatness in the kingdom 
he gives us a figure he personifies God's idea of a life of impact in a figure and then he, this is what he says um, let's go to verse 2 he says look unto Abraham understudy him look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear you he says for I called him alone huh? and blessed him you see God is speaking in summary but it didn't happen as immediate as that I called him I blessed him I increased him three things I called him I blessed him I increased him I called him I blessed him I increased him this is knowledge when you now begin to seek understanding you know that it's not just I called him I blessed him that call in its own is a subject that is worth studying Abraham leave your father's house that's part of I called him are we together now and then it says I blessed him and increased him in other words he is my idea of a man truly called of God he's my idea of a man truly blessed of God and he's my idea of a man who has experienced increase then he says look unto him if you want to experience his result that order of fruitfulness look unto him I hope you know Abraham experienced barrenness in his life physical barrenness and that qualifies him to truly be a replica or a portrait of God's idea of fruitfulness when God calls you listen to me whether in ministry whether in business whether in career when God calls you you don't answer that call as a champion you don't answer that call as a colleague the moment God calls you he begins to scan through your life until he finds meekness everybody say meekness until he finds humility everybody say humility the first price the first genuine price for fruitfulness is not quoting scripture it's not even applying principles it's a state of meekness and humility write it down the first requirement anybody who will be fruitful who will produce extraordinary results in his life in your ministry in whatever it is you're doing knowledge is useless to a proud heart knowledge is useless understanding is useless wisdom is useless to a proud heart brothers and sisters I submit to you that there are many proud people in the body of Christ proud men of God proud students proud young people are we together now proud elderly people when he calls you he requires humility your humility is your past and then he begins to communicate to you now this looks very simple but you find out how many people want to be great you ask them do you want to be great they say yes I want to be an anointed man I want to carry the anointing I want to carry revelation I want fame I want power no I'm showing you the system of God God's economy and how people are grafted into this enviable dimension of fruitfulness and greatness the foundation is a humble heart the foundation is a humble heart Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 it says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord it says let the word of christ dwell in you richly listen carefully the word of christ will never be able to pass through the entrance of your heart when there is pride and arrogance pride and arrogance pride and arrogance i know i think i know there are so many people that one single communication of humility would be the key to the next level 
but i know oh i'm educated enough i know look i'm not a child let me tell you something the moment submission becomes an embarrassment to you is a sign you are not a candidate for fruitfulness at all not just submission to a person submission to doctrines submission to mentorship submission to the teaching ministry of the spirit this i know mentality is the reason why many people keep failing in life i know my father is a pastor or was a pastor i know i was a bible study coordinator when i was on campus i know i married a pastor my husband is a pastor i know this and that you see all sorts of arrogant people many of us young people are arrogant i know i know what to do i know how to do this and we keep messing up and failing again and again sadly many of our parents i know and they have been balanced bringing forward seasons of failure and repeating it again with this i know mentality there's nothing i know that drives the spirit of god like a a proud and a haughty and a boastful heart do you want to be fruitful the first key is not just knowledge the first key is not even the leading of the spirit the first key is a broken and a contrite heart i show you the secret of great men they are they are the fortitude to break down and tremble before god where you lose the ability to argue with god god i, I is it that you have forgotten let me remind you uh -uh. abraham i know you have servants abraham i know you have a wife abraham i know you are a local champion but i'm about to take you to a dimension you never dreamt of first requirement get thee out please give it to us again genesis 12 verse 1 get thee out of your father's house get thee out of your kindred get thee out of your pride get ye out of your cocoon of boastfulness get ye be out of your accolades i am a this i've held 10 crusades i am a man of god i am so 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 and so and so no get thee out of your country get thee out of your kindred get thee out of your father's house onto a land that i will show you are we together you want to be fruitful the first key is that disposition of humility everybody say grant me grace to be meek to be humble to be broken hallelujah i will never argue with god's opinion i'm too young i'm too small i'm too naive to argue with God's opinion he's the fountain of wisdom some of us have been trading this childlikeness this this reckless abandon for years and look what he's done look what he's done but there are many of us who are too big to learn at his feet too big to understand the precepts of the kingdom and we find out that we keep going around the wilderness almost forever number two genesis chapter 12 verse 1 still the second key listen the second key to the journey of fruitfulness the journey of greatness is total trust and confidence ah. i will go i will go anywhere you lead I will go Lord I will go I will go anywhere you need I will go one more time I will go I will go
does not owe you explanation as to all the details of the journey the name of the mission is follow me the god i serve will never give you detailed instructions when you meet with god he doesn't start telling you one day he shows you the end and leaves you there he will never tell you what the process will be the mission is follow me why will i leave something i am sure of into something i am unsure of i'm sure of my country i'm sure of my kindred i'm sure of my father's house are we together you are sure of your certificate you are sure of the support of your parents you are sure that if you fail and there is no job your elder sister can be giving you twenty thousand. then he tells you come out to where a land that i will show you do you know what it means to ask an adult oga where are you going he says i'm following god <laughs> he says, i know i understand where to and he says honestly let me be sincere with you the only thing i know is the end of this journey i know that i will become a fruitful man i know that my name will be great i will be exceedingly fruitful that's all i know the the dynamics of the journey has not been given to me but i trust him but i trust him many of you see great people and think god gave them the details it's faith that opened up the details over people started ministry people god sent people to lands first night they slept under the bridge what are you doing in lagos sir god sent me you are a graduate come along with your certificate he asked me to leave it at home what are you now doing under the bridge this is the only place i know in lagos yet god said you will raise a people listen a man who does not trust god will never experience fruitfulness this our carnal sensual generation that wants oh god you must show me how one plus one becomes two the mission is follow me if you trust him enough follow me i will go I will go anywhere you lead me. Hey, I will go. Listen, um, you know me, I'm a fan of responsibility. I like responsible people. But let me tell you something nobody's destiny appears from the beginning, the vision speaks in the end. It is follow me. I asked Jimmy something one time sorry <clears throat> let me talk about you again <clears throat> and Jimmy said something to me one time he said there is nothing as powerful as being close to somebody building something great nothing looks great from beginning you only have the architectural plan which is usually to you alone and maybe a few people it is at the end when the vision becomes worthy of emulation then everybody starts saying i used to know a jimmy i used to know promise i used to know pastor alpha don't worry, i know them i remember when we we're taking gary and so on and so forth you see we live in a world where we are too obsessed about results before we start somewhere along the journey we should see results but you will be nasty to ask for results from the beginning of the journey what you ask for is the word of god that's the currency you use to start your journey to greatness where is the greatness with a patch on your trouser where is the greatness with one palms where is the greatness when you cannot afford 100 naira to barb your hair where is the greatness where the only bible you can afford is gideon's international that was given free during evangelism but i know he called me i know there is greatness i i can't show you where it is where are the members where is the tv station where are the workers they are in the loins of trust i trust him i trust him my obedience of faith will eventually begin to bring them god is speaking to someone who has refused to move for years because you are waiting for results it's a joke nobody gets results as an inheritance you get up and start walking on that water is as you walk on the water it begins to part 
if you are waiting for it to part before you walk you will die there at the red sea because pharaoh is coming tell the people of israel to move forward the bible says he parted the river with the breath of his nostrils did you see his nose physically it was a revelation that was given to a man so he was standing and waiting for them and i can imagine moses coming over 2.5 million people in the next five minutes you can be a dead man for bringing such a stupid news from the presence of god to people who know that within 24 hours the chariots of pharaoh will come back to kill them and moses said look this is what god told me move forward now bible history tells us that they start they entered the water and started moving when you watch your films or cartoons they just show the water part and the people smiling you don't need faith to smile and move when you can see dry land someone had to enter and say look if you people don't see me again know that i died believing and god says that's the person initiating me trust Him You are seated on the throne. You are seated on the throne. Listen. Listen. If you had seen me 15 years ago, there are people who know me. Some of the things you celebrate today was not there. Everything was in the loins of the foolishness. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Who told you you are the first to be given that instruction? Are you the first gentleman to be established? Oh, I'm taking it easy. You know, a, a job has not come yet. And uh, you know the way we are. Please! I'm not a stupid person. I understand responsibility. The key to fruitfulness is, Lord, I trust you. If I perish, let it not be that I perished in armed robbery. But I perished. The first crusade that we were going to, no money no nothing we had just about 20 people i've shared it with you some of our ladies were climbing the tree firewood yet god told me one day i will bless nations and people are climbing firewood don't use today to judge the prophecy on your life it's a it's a costly statement never use your result or lack of it now to mean god did not speak when God speaks, he does not speak now. He looks at Gideon and says, Oh mighty man of failure. A man hiding under a chair. I'm bringing you intelligence tonight. Because there are many great men and women refusing to step out. Especially some of us brothers. I don't just mean step out carelessly. This fear factor must be broken. Nobody gives you guarantee. When a generation of garant of guarantors open an account i need a guarantor do business and i need a guarantor what if something happens move on with your life start the building project this risk averse fearful mentality is a sign of carnality it's not play it safe in the kingdom you play it as you trust him when god says move brothers and sisters you close your eyes and step on that water and start moving if it be thou bid me come and he said peter come come peter you've never done it but it does not mean it can not be done there are many of us today there are many of our families there are many of our fathers who would have completed their building project now god spoke to them 10 years ago they had hundred thousand god said go it can buy one tipa of sharp sand Go and pour it on the land there and intimidate the devil. Say, no, 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 you know, we're intelligent people. We went to school. You don't build like that. And it's 20 years. The person who was a mechanic at the back of your house now has five houses. But somebody who cannot trust God. Listen, the raw material in God's economy is faith. 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 Not uncle. Not auntie. God uses men. But it comes from God through men to you. When you want it from men, you will die like a chicken. Are we together? 
second key trust let me tell you something except it's not the god of heaven you are going to walk with no matter who assures you in the flesh get set for fatal disappointment god himself will orchestrate an event where all the strings will be caught and he will say walk have you seen how children walk no matter how you love your child a day will come you must allow that child walk and truthfully speaking the child will walk and even fall down and injure the person that does not mean walking is not a possibility you clean the wound and say stand up continue walking you don't tell people oh sorry you were building the house and rain washed it all you know oh, no the church has become a weak place no results because we cannot trust God I trust God though, except I don't hear him if God says move there is no devil no devil in hell no devil in hell that can stop me because it is as you move that you commit him. your step of faith puts pressure on his integrity to prove to you go and ask any great man in the kingdom nobody gave him any assurance all this auxiliary faith you see people i love god but what they mean is there is one uncle the uncle promised me that when it gets too hot i should run back no you are not standing by faith after two days you are disturbing everybody calling everybody and saying look i, I trusted god it's just that yeah, the way this thing is no you are not serious i mean if i perish i perish lord i would know you for myself now if you don't give me this rent let me sit outside and you would think it's a joke you are bringing your mattress outside to sit and god says ah this realm of trust gone are the days we used growing up we used to hear strange testimonies quarter to shame god vetoed with his integrity but now you don't hear those testimonies again because we never trust god that far we never trust god that far I was sharing with the school of ministry students uh, i can't remember when years ago when i was in kaduna I, I went to do something in kaduna and i was coming back to zaria my transport money was not complete i'm not saying you should do foolish things you do them at it as his word my transport money was not complete i was hungry and i said i'm standing at the road here and there's no assurance that anybody will give me transport there is a little restaurant there and food there is 15 era why stand and die here at least let me satisfy one of the two i entered and i ate beans and yam 15 era i knew i was in trouble brothers and sisters i remember standing at that road and the spirit of god spoke to me he said stop a car and enter i stopped a vehicle and i entered to zaria i didn't say hey, please uh, i'm a man of god there is a call of god on my life it's not clear now but i want to trust me if i rise you will rise too if i eat you will eat too that's what we are doing now and we call faith i started engaging a conversation with someone when we passed Jaji and we were on our way coming then later the man the driver now started asking people to gather their money together and give him i knew i was in trouble but i knew i was not alone are we together now money can fail you men can fail you but his presence and his word will never fail never fail never fail if your confidence is in what you have in your bank account then something is really you are on your way to being frustrated if your confidence is because of one gold you bought and smuggled under a box or one one shoe or one whatever it is your confidence must be in the name of the lord his presence are you getting blessed tonight do you know the gentleman i was talking with just said ah don't worry he didn't even ask me my name don't worry and he brought out the money for two of us paid i dropped at um what that place flyover flyover i stood there at least what i had I, I can't remember whether i could bring me or not and the holy spirit told me to enter a bus again i entered the bus someone paid it i stopped at northgate with the same money i was at kaduna it was a message listen i've done stupid things in my life 
there are times that I believe God. Well, now I don't know whether it's God that spoke to me or not. But I remember trekking from area BZ to First Bank. By faith, believing there's money in my account. They were paying workers and I joined them. And when it got to my turn, they said there was no money. I was not embarrassed. I was walking my faith. I didn't use that. I knew that one day, no problem. I went there and they said, sorry, are you expecting a transfer? I said, yes. It has not reflected. No problem. After wasting two hours of my time, I thought it was a waste. But now I know it was a school. It was my school fees. I was paying my tuition fee in the school of faith. Because there is nothing that God says today that cannot be done. Listen. You don't grow just by reading the Bible. There must be an experience that will force you. Force you. For as long as all you are doing is just reading and quoting and counseling people. Counseling is easy. But one day God will say, Mr. Man, you have been encouraging people to walk on that water you have been sitting down today. Walk on this water. And you have to stand up and walk. Everybody say, Lord, I trust you. Say it, Lord, I trust you. Say it one more time, Lord, I trust you. Government cannot assure anybody. Insurance cannot assure anybody. This person talking to you is not daft. I understand these things. None of those things can ensure you. A man who trusts the Lord can watch his house on fire. And other people are saying, hey, catch him. Let him not have hypertension. He say, me? Hypertension? Where is the hand that builds the house in the first place? I, I don't regret what he will enter and dance and rejoice with tears coming out of his eyes. He said, I can't lose sleep because my God has infinite supply. Now, that's a man who has been worked on by the Spirit. High blood pressure, depression is a sign of not trusting God. Period. It's an uncomfortable truth, but know it. There are doctors here. Ask them. Young people now, you see somebody of 21 years entering the hospital and talking to himself. Is it this room? Is it that? Are you, are you okay? He says, how can I be okay in life? No. You don't trust God. So everybody wants this auxiliary thing. Ladies are looking for a man who has an evidence now. Shoe, car, estate. It's a joke. Brothers are looking for a lady who is working to wage them while they are looking for a job. Look at what society is becoming. A pastor is looking for quality members. Now we select the sheep. It's not just God that brings the increase. God brings the increase we choose. We throw away some sheep to die. Then we choose the quality sheep. Make them whatever it is, a pastor or elder or whatever, to pin them down. And we say we have faith. That's nonsense. Faith is when weak people come to you like David in the cave of Adullam. And you tell them, look, I see the grace and the hand of God in you. And after three years, you produce signs and wonders. And they bless them. There are people today God has used me to lift. I will never be hungry till Jesus comes. Now you would think uh, he's just lucky. No sir. No sir. The beauty is always at the end of it. When you start out with God, brothers and sisters, you must trust him. Pray one minute and say, Lord, kill unbelief. Your ministry will depend on his word to grow. Your business, stop harassing people to bless you, give you money, support you, please. Believe in the name of the Lord and let him trust you. Hallelujah. So he told Abraham. Told Abraham. Abraham! This is the deal. I know you don't know me. I'm not the idol you are worshipping. Leave these people. Let's go. 
the Bible says while he was going Lot went with him followed him several things started happening in his life and he said look let's separate and he was on his way going no child do you know how many years Abraham waited from the time of the word to the time of the child you have only waited two years and nobody rest again Lord you promised me that my husband is coming 2015 what happened with that vision that I saw that he has not landed till now you have prayed you have sown seed you see that's what you see people you harass every man of God around you because they are the representatives of God that you see where is my husband where is my breakthrough and God says look wait down on me I will bring my word to pass and no 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 oh God look I need time is his age is not on my side how old are you Are you learning something the price of trust trust is hard work let me tell you something about trusting God there are times you will ask him questions he will not answer you ask him questions about other people's situations he will answer but he will never answer you on the matter that's God for you he is the God I serve you will counsel someone now and hear him expressly and counsel the person and say my God and say Lord I've been talking to you about this issue of my family then he goes silent again then another person comes you you can almost think it's a mistake that you are backsliding until another person comes for counseling then the heavens are open and you are hearing clearly and suggesting things and someone is sending you a text and saying pastor alpha you are one of the greatest men of god i've met and you are saying lord look at this text and I'm crying that you come and wipe my tears in this area and he keeps quiet every time God is keeping quiet he's watching you <sighs> every time God is silent I want you to know he's watching you you know that song please take it lower my voice I want to sing the song the keeper of Israel He'll never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. The keeper of Israel. He'll never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. Hannah, where is your child? My child is in my trust. Coming. My child is in my trust. Penina is laughing at me. Don't worry. My child is in my trust. Young man, where is your God? Where are the results? That at your age, nothing is working. You are making it look like serving God is a mockery. Don't worry. There are times that God will allow people to finish talking nonsense. Then that's when he comes in. Majestically and lifts you in a way that everyone will see but many of us don't trust him let's admit it tonight and cry for greatness this ministry you see by the grace of God is a product of trust there are some of you who have lost things lost loved ones against the prophecy God told you keep trusting are we together keep trusting keep trusting because when you hold on and trust him overnight he will route your breakthrough truth to a, another way that you never thought possible pay attention to what I'm teaching you I'm speaking to you by the spirit tonight because there are people here this your complaint and shouting around everybody is not a blessing to heaven you must learn to smile in the midst of the storm it's a sign that you trust him there is nothing happening to you today that is new apostles have not eaten there was a time in the bible women were eating their children you are not that hungry to cut a beautiful baby like this our baby and eat do you know what the bible says can a mother forget a suckling child Two women ate one child. What hunger. 
then it was a turn to eat the child of the other one and then the other one said no 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 and the other woman said not so and they met a prophet of God and he said by this time tomorrow is the training that takes time the manifestation happens overnight don't ever call God Jehovah sharp sharp during training you are joking sharp 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 is during manifestation not training this foolishness that flies around the body of the body of Christ that is making us fools we want everything today once there is a little delay people say you don't have faith be careful many of the things you call lack of faith is a process in the spirit I've done a teaching here called the furnace of affliction many people are, are, are talking their nonsense let, let me tell you I'm old enough to know what speed and process is the path to the throne is the cross you will never dodge the cross and arrive at the throne if what you saw was a throne and you can't remember the experience of the cross start running away because that's not a throne satan wanted jesus to dodge the cross and get to the throne jesus said not so there is a protocol so brothers and sisters when you are carrying your cross like jesus and they are saying physician heal thyself you healed others you raise others what is wrong with you now don't answer them jesus didn't open his mouth wasting his time he just continued carrying his destiny are we together now because let me tell you brothers and sisters behind every glory there is a story you are writing your story now don't be ashamed of it keep trusting don't be ashamed that you did it and lie no people get people get sick and go and hide drugs they hide drugs and swallow and come and say for 20 years no don't be ashamed of your pain you are writing your story tomorrow you will stand before everybody and say you know me you know Saul you know Paul ah. Lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why i will lift up my voice and sing yeah. seasons in your life what you are running away from today you will miss it tomorrow what you are going through today is what will sustain your greatness hear what I'm telling you I'm speaking to you by the spirit don't run away from your pain carry the cross pay the price pay it honorably don't tell lies I cannot afford Gary now it doesn't mean I'm irresponsible I'm a tighter. I trust God. I'm walking my way with integrity to fruitfulness. There are so many packaging and lies. You borrow 100,000, buy a shoe, buy hair, buy a shirt, buy suit, buy Bible, buy iPad, and say I'm in ministry. Or God, walk it slowly. You may, you may take pap for one week. Don't be ashamed. If a visitor wants to visit you, don't beg your friend to go to his house and say, that's my house. Don't be ashamed of your father. Your father is a carpenter. Your father is an iron bender. <coughs> you are lying and saying your family are abroad. Don't ever, don't be ashamed of your pain. It is what validates your testimony tomorrow. When you rise and people say you faked it, someone say, I knew him oh. I knew that brother when he was tightening and soaking Gary. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. Christians, hear me. I know that you watch those who were your classmates. They are going and God is saying, wait back. Don't, don't cry. Don't ever find yourself crying. Because one step with his voice will over. It will give you 10 years result overnight. 
many people will insult me for what i'm telling you now because it's an unconventional path but that's the path to the throne that's where we follow to be where we are today rejoice not over me my enemy stop this life of lies and packaging no the word is working whether you see results or not if you are sick go to the hospital with honor the healing ministry is still on your head it will come it will manifest God told you you will be a bishop over churches in nations and three years into the ministry you have 20 members don't lie and write online that you have 30 branches and 50 people why fake what will eventually be real Lord I trust you oh I trust you I trust you I trust you and I rejoice I'm not ashamed of my pain I'm not ashamed of where I am if all I can take today is Gary I take it with honor and pride if you visit me you will join me taking that Gary if you think you are too big no problem I honor you but don't rush my seasons let me go through it let me go through it I know we started ministry together now you have 1,000 members I have 10 members our anointings are not the same the higher the anointing the deeper the call the higher the anointing the more the greater the weight unhealthy comparison all kinds of things destroying the body of Christ when you want a genuine anointing you must be ready to dig deep you must be ready to dig deep there are times God will tell other come to sin other ladies will be moving and God will say you stay back and you say God you have started with me again God said just walk with me see let me tell you if your work with God does not cause you to ask questions you are not working with him because you you walk with God one day and say God what is this then he keeps quiet you are reaching your breaking point because a day will come you say Lord whether you ever bless me again or not since I've come this far I've, there's a way you enter fire it burns you there's nothing to burn again what made you cry yesterday is what will make you rejoice today that's spiritual maturity that's why you see men somebody persecutes you and says pastor alpha is not he he's, he's somebody who is doing this and that and he doesn't even pray about it you have sat in that fire long enough that fire has roasted every flesh there's nothing left there again this over consciousness the need to explain yourself is a sign that you have not been broken in his presence many people see manifestations like this like what is happening they desire it they put their hand on their head and then they think all to get it is to package 10,000 naira. Is that what you pay for the school fees of your, your, your school? You package 10,000 naira and no, you can take an anointing but not a track record. The track record must be even husband and wife, you won't pass through this together. No matter how close you are, when it comes to this journey, let me tell you, I know you love yourselves but God will isolate you and put you it's amazing a husband and his wife can be married but be going through experiences both of them cannot explain to themselves that's the dealings of God that's why you must be sensitive that's why we say people must be born again to marry and serious with God because of these seasons a time will happen you get up in the morning and see your husband like a madman strolling in front of the parlor don't think he's stupid it's not depression it's a season even him he cannot articulate the name of what is happening to him and women like knowing my husband what is it that i'm not cooking well for he says look you are too innocent to be carried into this furnace just stay there when i win i will let you know and the man says this is the valley of the shadow of death I can't watch you and my innocent children or whoever just stay there and you see him wake up time to eat a delicious meal he just turns that plate upside down and there's no appetite listen the training of a spiritual man is hard this is why you talk about them in the secret God will punish you in the open you don't know what is a covenant pain is a covenant in the realm of the spirit Psalm 50 verse 5 
gather unto me my sins they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice for every time you cry and still trust him is a covenant you are entering with him you may not know for every time he did not show up and people say where is your god and you frown back in shame and say lord i didn't have an answer for them but you are still my god it's a covenant you are entering somebody insults that altar is a joke i taught you on altars last week no sir That's why when you hear certain men of God talk, you think he's pride. You may not respect them, but respect the blood on their altar. Because there is blood there. God will not give you a mic and call people just because you think you have been in ministry for years. No, sir. You don't like tonight's message. It doesn't look very nice. I show you the making of spiritual people. You want fruitfulness? It's not just a key point. A, B, C, D. I'm leading you. Some of you, I'm revealing to you what you are about to enter because it's a season. God said it's your year of triumph. Welcome to the season when the other side of the training will start. It's not a course. Listen, listen, hold on. There is a difference between temptation and trials. Listen, let me correct something here. God never tempts people. Where you see tempt written with respect to God, it was an error in translation temptation is a trap trial is a test it's an exam God will never tempt you the goal of temptation is to destroy you the goal of a trial is to build you are we together now when those seasons come do not think it is unusual you want power you want grace you want to prophesy to someone you want to speak over people and let them come to testify brothers and sisters it's not suit and tie it's not designers it's a track record it's blood and tears and pain you want god to give you the wealth of nations overnight it will not happen just by luck everybody say trust <laughs> say trust genesis 17 let's read from verse 1 to 6 thank you darling Genesis 17, quickly. When Abraham was how old? 90 years old. Bible students, how was he? How old was he when God called him? Help me. 75. 90 years old. Abraham had not yet seen that promise and that blessing. And he was still walking. God came and just reminded him hey, my God when Abraham was 90 years old and 9 100 minus 1 the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him I am the almighty God walk thou before me and be perfect you are reading to verse 6 and I will make my covenant between me and thee and I will multiply thee what say fruitfulness I will multiply you after waiting so long i will still do it exceedingly verse 3 and abraham fell on his face and god talked with him saying we are reading to verse 6 as for me behold my covenant is with thee abraham remember the discussion we had in chapter 12 i came to remind you that is still in force although your life has not seen it continue don't give up let me tell you how to know god is leading you sometimes in the midst of that fire help will not come is a reminder you know how an alarm is tan 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 i know that fire is roasting you but just calm down i'm still alive god where are you i've always been there watching you so he's reminding abraham thou shalt be a father of many nations just an updated translation of genesis 12. read on neither shall thy name anymore be called abraham but thy name shall be called what Abraham for a father of many nations have I made thee verse 6 and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee Abraham continue Abraham continue 
it's been five years oh god every brother that wants to come to me you drive him away god says i know exactly what i'm doing just keep walking why are you doing this to me and god says continue to walk brothers and sisters there is one thing i can tell you the dealings of god with men is like pregnancy you've seen a woman pregnant a woman does not throw away her pregnancy because she's vomiting blood because she's coughing because she's doing whatever you will still carry it whether they are twins or triplets you won't beg that one child should come to your head because they are heavy you are still going to god has put an exact position where that child must stay if you had a choice you would transfer it to your head to make it easy but that's not god's way you will leave that child there that pregnancy will twist you you who used to be a nice beautiful lady still carry the pregnancy the pregnancy will force you to want food that is smelling smoke you who will not even eat food but now the pregnancy has so deshaped you and redefined your appetites keep going because when that child is born it is the giving birth that will bring people to you they won't just come to visit you for nothing except God has not spoken you will see triumph this year forget whatever it is that is happening except the God of heaven has not spoken you will see it happen I trust him. I trust him. I trust him. Trust him. Show us the ancient path. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest Show us the ancient past Would you lead us along eternal highway We want to follow the ways of Jesus We want to enter your rest I wish I didn't have to preach this today. I wish I could just tell you all there was to success and fruitfulness is just drop money, receive an impartation, let it roll you on the ground and all of a sudden, listen, this is a painful key to a sustainable destiny. There, tonight there's no male and female. If you want to pass through that road, you are genderless when it comes to that, that dealing. You won't say reduce the training because I'm a woman. There is no woman in this process because you are working with your spirit. You will pass through. Don't let your tears stop you. <clears throat> you may cry, oh, but continue. God is speaking to someone. Don't let your tears ever stop you. Don't let the naysayers bring words to you and say, I thought you claim you are called. And then because of that, you now say, okay, let me organize a seven days prayer meeting to prove to these people I'm called. God didn't send you. You are now compounding both fullness of affliction and temptation. You are joining them together to kill yourself. No. Satan came when Jesus was hungry and thirsty and said, if you are the son of God, turn this stone to bread. He had the power to make it happen. He said, no. I don't have to prove it. The voice has already declared it with power that I'm the Son of God. Trust. 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 Submission. Brokenness. Then the next step, trust. Please sit down. Let me give you two more. And then we'll pray. The third key to being fruitful is an encounter with the spirit of revelation. Write it down. The third key to being fruitful is an encounter with the spirit of revelation. When you trust God and you begin to walk with him, 
he will use your life and use everything around you to begin to expose you to the manifestation of the spirit of revelation the spirit of revelation is not knowledge the spirit of revelation is not knowledge the spirit of revelation brings you into not just an awareness but um how do i put it now it is it's really the word intercourse is the word koinonia a sharing together with that information such that you are not just aware you become an expression of it the spirit of revelation god begins to show you how things work and because you are already broken and you are at your low estate there will not be pride and argument you will listen he will speak to you he will guide you precept upon precept he will lead you to a book a book by a man of God you would have never bought in your times of pride but now because you have been broken you will go and sit down and settle down that book you are learning while you are learning nothing yet as at yet is happening but you are building knowledge understanding revelation insight insight is very important if you must be fruit. listen the birth of anything valuable is painful anything valuable you don't mind gold on the surface right you dig deep there are certain levels of insight no matter how much you are a christian god will not just hand it over to you at a platter of gold there is a posture you must take in the spirit to appreciate it so god will wait you may hear a man of god preach it but it will be unfruitful to you until a season activates the need for it then god now begins to bring you that revelation and it starts making sense yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death you have been reading it you recited it when you were in sunday school but now that you are really in the valley of the shadow of death that scripture means a lot to you i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me and the word comes with light I remember the time we gave an instruction to dance i know that many people didn't do it do you know why because there's no need for it in their life you see if i give you touch light in the daytime you will appreciate me and just throw it away and even forget where it is but if nepa takes light you'll be looking for your phone the slightest light you will crawl and not be ashamed to look for it it is wasteful to supply people light that they have not yet communicated a need for they won't appreciate it you know growing up in ministry i always wondered why in pastors conferences when a man of god is preaching he can say something simple and you see pastors crying they are usually the ones standing up when a man of god is preaching and someone there is just laughing and say guy this man has energy to be standing up then the person laughing now marries a pastor you see that and after five years of hellfire the next time they go for a conference they say let's wave our hands the person is rolling Just wave your hands to god and say, i can't wave my hands oh god wave my hand is what i do in my room i will roll here because you have now seen the need for that revelation some of you what you are hearing today will not be applicable to you today the holy spirit will store it in a bank it will be after four years huh four years one night you will pant after this message you will find it you will gasp for it you will borrow phones borrow lantern and sit down and listen to it the price of revelation the bible says, buy the truth everybody say the truth is costly say it again the truth is costly yes it will cost you time listen you don't attract to your life what you love you attract to your life what you respect to love a thing is to find it desirable to respect a thing is to find it valuable there are two different things you never attract to your life what you love you attract to your life what you honor what you respect to love a thing or a person is to find that thing or that person desirable 
an emotional connect but to respect a thing is to find it valuable it's a right for these words are faithful and true i've been a student in the school of revelation this bible you see when i'm lying down to sleep it's on my bed when i wake up it's following me wherever I'm. forget how old you are seeing it like this this bible has i've worked with this bible for a while and i have found secrets therein secrets that can turn any man to become every word that god spoke concerning him nobody will spoon feed you thank god for devotionals thank god for um Esod. thank god for concordances but brothers and sisters if you want to know god you want to grow in the world you have to sit down this spoon feeding of believers now I, of course i'm a, I'm, I'm not i'm not against access to devices and things that will help us but there is nothing that will replace sitting down in one place and giving the word time i'm too busy i'm too busy then you see your life nose diving they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh some of you open your bible only on friday during koinonia you close it on friday only to open it on friday again or on sunday that's not a good testimony let me tell you you will need to be serious with the word of god this is like a treasure chest your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise i will sing I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing now for joy. I will sing. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. whatever you spend time with you become that thing you spend time in a beer parlor you become a drunkard you don't become a, a pilot in a beer parlor you spend time in a beer parlor you become you spend time playing games computer games you become a computer game professional you spend time in the farm you become you don't become a doctor you spend time in his presence you become an envoy that's what happens a testament that the word of god is alive spend time in his presence don't say i'm busy doing what god gave you 24 hours to seek him if you are seeking him properly it is enough some of us are snoring away our destinies when we should be seeking him some of us are eating away our destinies when you should be seeking him some of us are gisting and gossiping away our destinies when we should be seeking him i'd like you to pray and say lord restore my passion for scripture pray pray before we continue restore my passion for scripture i don't know what happened to me but lord restore my passion for scripture the excuses that i give the laziness this spiritual inertia that came upon me and is making me barren and unfruitful in the world you are a pastor pray this prayer twice because you can be studying the bible just to get messages not to encounter god and not to grow you are a man of god here you are a ministry pay twice hallelujah psalms 82 verse 5 to 7 says they know not please give it to us psalms 82 and verse 5 
they know not neither will they understand he says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course i want us to look at verse 5 in amplified if it's possible please give it to us if it's not possible then we'll just go let's look at it i want you to see the way amplified puts it the magistrates and judges know not neither will they understand listen they walk on in the darkness of complacent satisfaction and then he says all the foundations of the earth the fundamental principles upon which rest administration and justice are shaking please go back to king james verse 6 says have i not said regardless of your state it does not change my prophecy your lack of revelation and understanding robs you but my prophecy still remains the same have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 tragedy it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so i have said you are gods but it doesn't mean you will manifest it between prophecy and manifestation is access to revelation understanding the working knowledge of the word the epignosis we call it many times god delays your lifting to help you understand the laws you are you are going to be working with like tools god delays your lifting to help you understand these laws you don't learn these laws when you are on stage no life is very unforgiving for the unprepared so he delays you a bit yeah. and keeps you so that you will learn it you never knew that praise was a weapon you thought it was something they do before messages come and then in that cave of adulam the spirit of revelation comes to you and says look praise is not just about singing songs dancing is not just about moving your body clapping is not just about making sounds and he begins to teach you that your tears are a mystery in the spirit your laughter is a mystery in the spirit and all of a sudden you see situations that can crash your life down and the spirit of god tells you laugh now because you know this law you will not think you are you are you are you are mad you will laugh do you know in psalm 2 let me show you something about laughter laughter is a mystery the irony is that every time god wants to judge he laughs before he starts judgment psalm 2 give it to us why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing next verse the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the lord and against his anointed saying let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us verse 4 he that seated in the heaven shall do what help me shall do what if we ask promise come if i ask promise to stand here and i say promise talk to us and all of us start laughing at him i mean real laugh some of you the way you laugh if somebody he can even cry just watching you laugh now imagine all of us keep laughing at him what do you think will happen to him let me tell you something about laughter laughter is a weapon that disarms the devil it's a it's a dangerous spiritual arsenal that believers do not know the bible says, rejoice in the lord and again i say rejoice when you see people under the anointing you see them laughing you know the trouble that they were complaining of before they fell under the anointing they are laughing and they stand up and they are ashamed of themselves they are cleaning their powder and they are, they are instead of them to rejoice whatever made the holy ghost to make you laugh don't you think it's a good thing because when god laughs start rejoicing but the enemies his enemies who have made themselves your enemies as i'm going to be showing you now he that seated in the heavens shall laugh the lord shall have them in derision verse 5 after laughing then he shall what speak to them don't worry this is a ministry of signs and wonders you know that 
then he shall speak to them this laughter you see that is happening is by the spirit don't think people are faking it for those of you who are new it's the it's of the spirit right remember the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the word so as the spirit of god is speaking this is what is called this is not a miracle these are signs and wonders is a ministry whereas you are speaking there is a grace for performance is a sign to both believers and unbelievers to show the level of accuracy of the person speaking and to show that this is truly of God are we together now I'm explaining it to you so you see she's not the only person who will laugh you'll see people laugh all around but it is by the spirit you can't sit down and be laughing like this that's a beautiful lady if she should watch herself laughing like that she will stop so this is by the spirit it's all right let's let's continue after laughing after laughing what do you think you will do then she shall speak to them in what so that laughter was not just because he's happy he's laughing at what he as a as a principle before you know how somebody's about to beat you and <laughs> let me just smile that's what god is doing there it's in your bible i'm showing you mysteries mysteries that all, that's why the first sign of the spirit of depression ask doctors is the absence of laughter when two people are fighting what's the first thing that disappears not love laughter laughter so you turn your way i turn my way and the devil is happy but all of a sudden you see your result or your boss tells you we are going to downsize people and your name is on the list we have been eyeing you we are hoping to drive you and now that we are found and you just tell him god bless you sir you say I, i'm talking and you are still smiling no no i'm not smiling at you sir i'm just god is faithful i'm smiling because i know my god is alive not a sarcastic laugh but a laugh in confidence a brother comes and said i've changed my mind i will marry you again and he said, okay, god be the glory you can laugh with tears coming out of your eyes just do it it's a mystery it's not about i feel like you are engaging a mystery where you tight you don't feel like you are moved by that revelation listen there are many cheap pathways to victory in the spirit that we do not know some of you hate those that are always happy and laughing the bible says, a merry heart a merry heart not just a merry mouth not just a merry faith your heart can laugh too your heart can be happy and it will show i'm not talking of this clownish thing you can be happy the joy of the lord this depression that many of us are carrying you don't know that depression is like a door that you open for the spirit of darkness and it sits on your destiny you never see me frowning and pulling my face as if the whole world is falling god is alive two of us can't be awake if he's awake i sleep And then judgment follows immediately there are times what you need to do is to write a request of all the things that have mocked you and laugh before God and say Lord I've cried but I won't cry again and laugh before him switch to dancing switch to praise musician or not if you cannot sing find this high Igbo praise high Igbo praise those people did not produce that album for money you, you you see the consecration in their lives you know they meant it the, the the scriptures they quote before the song starts that's that's called warfare praise don't let people tell you there is no such thing right psalms 149 let the high praise of god be in their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands there is a warfare dimension of praise when all else fails switch to praise dance your life and turn every hell around the same way yoruba people dance before a rich man they play drums and dance he wants to enter his car they call his name and shake their head and dance before you know it he will reach out to his pocket and bring out what he did not plan for was it not a lady that danced before herod what is it about her dance she danced before herod and removed the head of a prophet what is troubling you is not a prophet. Can I remove the head? 
Kenneth Copeland asked Bishop Oyedeko and said, you claim we are the ones who mentored you in the word of faith. But why is it that God has given you this increase? So much members. And Bishop Oyedeko said he danced every one person in this church into that place. See, let me tell you, I don't like dancing. God, I, I, you know, you look at me and you know that I don't have that gift. But it's a weapon. Do you use a weapon just because you like it? You use it for efficiency. Efficiency. knowledge of the principles of the kingdom so you know what to do your rent is expiring that's not the time to pray wrong spiritual approach no it's too late you would have been praying since you saw the signal you have been having a lot of dreams the moment it is quarter to shape don't pray dance rejoice please let this thing i'm teaching you the weapons of war he said with wise counsel make war quarter to shame get one colonial message get one worship team people come and give them honorarium let them record something and sing and dance put it in your pocket if all your phone has is movies and games you are not ready for life you must have these arsenals in place so that the moment the devil strikes you know the song already you bring it out hallelujah and you watch battles turn around overnight overnight battles turn around overnight listen you want to be fruitful the longest period of your waiting process will be invested in knowledge spiritual intelligence knowledge you have trusted god you are humble but let me tell you the classes of the realm of the spirit is not semester by semester you see that it's a product of many things god's course is not three credit load it is your desire that can turn it into three credit six credit you can do a lecture two weeks and you have finished a class and the next class is two years you stay there god's classes is not like a an exact period of three three months no way you can be two years in a class he will give you break then you do another elective and call you back not to a higher cost the same cost let's continue lord i thought we finished no we finished what let's continue but when you are done you will see the value of that thing for a student you can miss a few lectures and read quickly during exam and make up in the school of the spirit you miss one class that class you have missed will show in your destiny that lecture you did not attend the floor will be very clear in your destiny. God's, God's dossier for attendance must be 100%. Even if you have graduated and you have 89%, you must complete that remaining. That's why some of you will be embarrassed. That after many years, you see God drawing you to certain things that you think are basic. Just walk with him. Walk with him and sit quietly and let him deal with you. You think that you have finished the issue of the flesh and then one day as a great man of God, God calls you for a fresh lecture and the theme of the lecture is crucifying the flesh and you start again. Don't fight him. Be humble and stay. Say, Lord, help me. You thought you have overcome loss for money and then after 20 years of ministry, God asks you to go for a retreat and you don't talk about pride, whatever. God says, I just want to kill the influence of mammon. And he said, Lord, I thought when I started with you, he said, we didn't finish that course. I only gave you a break. Or you stopped attending lectures. But now that you are ready to come back, you don't do superstar with God. If you miss lectures for 10 years, the day you meet with God again, you go back and continue from where you started. Now, men don't expect you to go back. This is the challenge I have with celebrities who become born again someone was a secular for instance a secular musician are, are we together now and then the guy gets born again and then you bring him to church and he's already used to the flamboyancy of stage life then you make him music director no way if he comes to church he must join if you have a foundation class he must go through that principle and learn and know god that his gifted is not enough is he spiritual it takes time to be spiritual you don't impart spirituality 
hallelujah everybody say revelation say knowledge when you see a man that is full of light and revelation when God gives the green light look at David David was in the wilderness and God kept training him with the sleep the moment it was time to destroy Goliath he went with confidence when you shake in the time of battle it's a sign that you are not sure of your arsenals are we together now and he defeated Goliath effortlessly my personal goal is to have access to the mysteries as many if not all that I will need for my life and destiny and to fulfill God's call for my life so that no matter what arises before it lands is meeting a mystery mysteries are not words that I coined out that's the name of the system of God's operation he operates in mysteries Matthew 13 verse 11 it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom Matthew 13 11 it has been given to you we do business in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know someone looks at you and says promise you will never rise in this life that person is not just making an empty statement that person is speaking on the strength of something maybe divination you don't just stand and say it will never happen it will happen until you have a mystery and understanding something you know that can oppose it are we together now yes if i push this guy he should fall down but if he's stronger than me he can create another force that will resist whatever i'm trying to do then he will stand you don't stand in life not holding anything and dare the devil and dare witches and wizards like many arrogant people are doing in the body of christ if you know you have power come and kill us in the village and you hear silence no answer the only thing you see is that after one week the only thing you can do is to see you can't talk you can't stand you can't stand up you can't walk that was the answer from the realm of the spirit to you and saying be careful make sure you see god before you stand before pharaoh but by the grace of god with the training you are receiving here let me tell you i pity whoever rises against you one dance one dance one hour of proper dance in the presence of god will crumble that person to his knees i tell you this don't just hear these things alone a devourer is coming you pick up your tithe and say lord i am a titan I am a tighter I stand as a family we are tighters my business is a tithing business devourer I rebuke you and Satan says he knows he knows he understands you can be a tighter and he will still destroy you you speak based on knowledge the Bible says knowledge uh, how did he put it wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times what do you know that can bail you out in this period of languishing recession and pain what do you do when you are the only person who is born again in your family and everybody is opposing you do you know there is something you can engage please everybody say after me excuse me say after me in the name of jesus what i need to do in the face of danger in the face of challenges i receive access to it it is costly to stand stupefied watching life not knowing what to do he said jesus himself knew what to do jesus himself knew what to do you find out that you've been married six months People are asking you, Madam, we are not seeing anything. Don't worry. Don't start getting angry and saying, what is your business? No. Just say, Lord, I give you thanks. One year, two years, three years, it looks like no child is coming. Don't start being cynical and see every woman with a child and you are angry and saying, they are laughing at me. No. 
father i give you praise start practicing the law of honor you see pastor alpha and his wife and their child what do this child want oh this child needs a shoe you quickly go and buy the shoe you are engaging mystery see waiting for things to change i told you is the secret of frustration you engage you only wait when you know you are engaging some of us have been sitting waiting if you are waiting to know what to do then that's wise if you are waiting for things to change apostle nobody is coming to marry me engage engage do something engage doesn't mean to travel and go to a married man's house somewhere <laughs> to engage means find someone who has married find a family find one mother somewhere you see our mothers all around one day you can find a mother package five for life package something wrap her and say mommy please i see that you are married with seven children they are all alive and they are responsible that grace upon your life i've taught you commanding result these are the various mysteries you must be trading for you to rise and you engage it the woman will just hold it and say my daughter may god bless you i bless you i remember it was pastor corey de komaya that was sharing a story he has twins and um um was bishop aremu of living faith you know i think they have twins too and one time his wife was with the wife of bishop aremu and then she looked at her and said you self uh -uh, you've not given birth to you've not given birth again and she said mommy no and she took her veil and stoned her with it said take twins job like joke that's how she was pregnant with twins and gave birth with twins there are mantles so there are people who are careers of your prayer point bodily they are working in it when you know how to tap into what your portion is you will find out that where, what is killing others you will walk over it there's no food in your house you find somebody who has enough to give and buy one mudu of gari and take to his house it looks like it's, it's not it's not correct but that's how we rise in the kingdom the lesser you have 500 naira left don't wait till it's 20 naira i don't know how one tier how much one tier of gari is you buy it buy lollipop for the children you don't even have to tell them that's why you came just like boy take once they open your lollipop and they're taking start rejoicing they are engaging a mystery Gosh. brothers and sisters those who don't know the mysteries of the kingdom are the ones who remain you enter a place to start a ministry nobody knows you you are a young minister find the greatest ministry there orthodox or pentecostal quietly go and worship with them whether you believe what they are saying or not sit down under that atmosphere when you worship with them try to see if you can gain access to the man of god if you cannot put a small seed and sow, that atmosphere must open for your ministry because you are tapping into a grace you go to minister somewhere and there is a man of god with an unction higher than you recognize and honor him don't enter there and just say well we are all here and uh, i hear this person is around don't be stupid many young people do that and their heavens are closed and for that ministration they struggle you enter there are elderly people you appreciate them you are a small boy or small girl that god gave grace don't ignore them i appreciate everybody here and you find out boom your heaven is open but you go there arrogantly and you see people who are you may have more revelation than them it's not about revelation it's about status it's about a track record in the spirit are we getting blessed for every dimension you desire there is a mystery that controls it find out learn it find out it won't come as a gift it's a by the truth it will cost you you found out that nothing is working financially in your life don't say that's how every young man is it's a lie let me tell you the truth there are people look at me i say it with all humility there are people who have conquered poverty and lack forever it will never return till jesus comes make no mistakes of believing that everybody is struggling don't take people's humility for granted to think they are struggling there are people who left the realm of financial struggle since you tap into it listen to the materials 
don't sit down and say I'm, we are all young people we are not i'm not talking of job listen do you know many people in the kingdom don't prosper god's way very few people in the kingdom prosper god's way so when they hear people like us talking like this they think we are just talking nonsense there is a way god grants you prosperity that no devil no gate of hell will turn it around not up today down tomorrow you are up and you have gone never to return back again may that be your testimony but do you know the key you want to start a church please help the people shouting outside you want to start a church you don't know the key to leadership there is an exceptional leader somewhere learn the mysteries we are going to rise up to pray shortly i thought i'll be able to just um take the last part but then even if we stop here that's all right access to light the mysteries of the kingdom the secrets of champions there are people who taught certain things in the spirit and receive certain strange results here on earth strange results i have seen people with a grace nothing finishes in their hands they may not like promise was saying when he was raising the offering they may not be able to give you 100 million now but you will never come to their house remember what i was sharing last week a woman you see one mama selling akara with that akara she can bring out hundred thousand and give you you are doing three jobs hundred hundred thousand yet your money finishes there is a grace listen the final thing i'll talk about very quickly is tapping into certain dimensions of grace some things cannot be taught they are received but it's not just general anointing holy spirit come <clears throat> it's locating people who are carriers of these dimensions it must be working for somebody close to you have the humility to see it a gentleman met me some time ago and he said he wanted to buy a car i said really i said so what are you doing about it and he said he's saving i laughed i said that means you are not going to buy a car forever till jesus comes you see a young man and ask him you want to buy a land he said what are you doing he said i'm i'm planning uh, for now i have hundred thousand you don't buy land by saving you buy land through favor whatever god gives you is not what you keep to buy land is what you engage correctly with that brings you to that level now many mainstream people again are going to insult me for this thing and even forget all those stupid preachers because they collect land and money from people but i tell you this with the integrity of god psalm 45 44 verse 3 give us psalm 44 verse 3 let me show you how to acquire if god wants to give you grace god wants to give you land this is how it comes read if you're a christian want to read by their own sword uh-huh neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand and thy arm the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor this is how it happens this is how it happens there are graces you must tap into you don't have by default the baptism of the holy spirit will not bring those graces for you when you have revelation part of the things that revelation will give you is the ability to discern dr mike mudo calls it wisdom the ability to discern difference ah i've been a roommate with promise and i've noticed that my job pays more than his job but he's happier healthier with a lot of money is in my presence i watch people bringing favor it's a sign that there is a grace operating let me tell you something it may be your husband it may be your wife it will not jump on them just because it's your wife or husband you must consciously tap into it are we together now if if um come Marcelina, if Marcelina has a grace for supernatural favor i can stand as an arrogant man of god preaching with no favor but through knowledge i want to be fruitful remember i want results i'm talking of extraordinary fruitfulness I will discern how do you discern observation 
observation of recurrent results in people's lives are a sign that there is the finger of God a woman has four five six children all of them are responsible and you know that it's not that the parents could train them well there is a grace you are about to get married as a young couple go and meet them kneel down help her make pepper soup do whatever you do mommy bless us she say ah no don't worry my children don't allow all that greeting to distract you kneel down and remain there till that hand comes on your head and you you can sow into her life you can say marcelina sorry let me just help you and worship you. ah no i won't do this you are a great woman of god no. no even if you are the person that got that person born again with respect to what you want to receive you are the lesser so you must humble yourself to receive are we together and you tap into that grace and that man to lands on your head you start producing extraordinary results i'm like a fisherman i know graces that are needed and where they are found and when i when i'm pursuing a grace i'm not embarrassed that's what took me to canaan land to go and meet bishop Oyedeko. that's what took me to joss to go and meet renard bonke you you fish unashamedly you don't receive impartation from colleagues promise promise we are we are uh, i remember when we were in secondary school can you bless me i'm seeing something working in your life What's it? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what he's doing? <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't realize what he was doing. Praise God. There are people who are very foolish. Some of you, your parents are carrying the grace that you need for your next level. But you have not discerned it. You pass them every time. Mommy, I'm going for fellowship. May God help you. And she keeps wondering. When she was your age, 20 men were looking for her. You are almost twice her age. Nobody is coming. Tap. Tap into it. Somebody who lives in your neighborhood, all he has is primary school certificate. Yet in your presence, you are, you are joining others to say his money is, is charm. Because naysayers always find explanations once they see someone blessed they have to find something and say that thing here eh, you see eh, Jimmy just leave that guy that guy is, uh, is a there is a spirit don't see every young man who is blessed and just think there, there are spirits all around this is the end time be careful be careful don't allow cynical people rob you of your blessings when you find out that there is a grace it doesn't have to be from a high man of God. Some of you this night, if you can turn and look at your roommate that you have been fighting with every day, in the midst of that fight, there is a grace. Tap into it. Be the one to cook the food tomorrow. What's the occasion? I noticed three of you in this room, there is a hand of God on your life. Sir, I notice there is no week that passes without you being favored. I want to tap into it. You may not have money. You have polish. You can polish a shoe. You don't have money. You have soap. You can wash. Find one socks, whether it's clean or not. Soak it again and wash it. Lord, this is how I'm washing every nonsense out of my life. Results. Results. Your father may be a harsh man. Your mother may be a harsh man. But you have never seen them beg for bread. There are results in that area. Look away from the imperfections some of you your pastors may not have the revelations you have you even have higher revelations than them don't worry there is something they carry there are people no matter where they go to in less than three weeks somebody must find them and favor them they have this grace for territory send them to the valley of the shadow of death before they land there an angel will be waiting there look for them and bless them so is it there are many people who want crowds look for mission agencies around there are mission agencies there are orphanages you want god to make your children correct that their brains will be working well find an orphanage buy one bag of rice drag it there and meet them 
the children may not tell you thank you they may not even recognize you you are not doing it just for that tap into it i'm showing you how i live my life you engage mysteries and come back home and start dancing and rejoicing it's like a charm that has called all the blessings they start following you and bulldoze any mountain standing by themselves the principles will fight their way to bring the result to your life listen if you are here and you are looking for a job and you don't have a job start engaging mysteries now otherwise you will never get one please hear me are we together especially for brothers i'm waiting for a job you will wait forever engage mysteries if you don't know ask questions you want to start to start a business all you have is capital and a brain you are going to lose let me advise you don't even waste your time to start there are spiritual things we engage go and listen to my message spiritual intelligence settle things from the realm of the spirit before you start anytime you are in trouble don't start running to meet people physically settle it in the secret place you are in trouble the landlord is about to come and throw you out there is trouble your parents are going to court leave all those those things are shadows enter the secret place and correct it if it's something you need to invoke mercy invoke the mercy of god i've taught you about the mercy of god the mercy of god will turn is is god's divine partiality you should hang in the cross everybody knows you engage that mystery things turn around in a way that will surprise you hallelujah you see students here those who are students they will write exams they will not answer the questions but engage the right mysteries they come out from the exam cgpa 4.8 cgpa 4.7 you think these things are just guesswork no you engage mysteries we are going to pray our time is gone but i want you to cry for fruitfulness and i want you to cry for discernment discernment to know how to tap into graces don't sit down and be barren i've taught you brokenness i've taught you humility i've taught you trust i've taught you revelation you must come around the knowledge of the mysteries and then i've taught you how to search for anointings and graces that will fast track your life rise up on your feet and cry passionately before the god of heaven Pray. Hallelujah. Just three quick prayer points. Prayer point number one. Lord supernatural supply of grace to trust you i will never doubt you again whether i understand what you are doing or not i banish complaint from my life i banish grumbling from my life lift your voice and pray supernatural grace to trust pray Grace to trust you. Grace to trust you. Grace to trust you. She na mala na mala na bos. Le na na ma se na na. She na na na. She na na ma se bra na na mala na mala na 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 mala. I want to be extraordinarily fruitful, exceedingly fruitful. Shabra kata koso do paka shabra kata mala na ma. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, the mysteries I need to know in this season for the next level of my results. Show me. Give me encounters. Lift your voice and start crying. Lift your voice and start crying to God. Shera ma 
Show me, show me, open my eyes. Make a parado kapraska dabalakaya. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Show me the mysteries of wealth. Show me the mysteries of increase. Show me the mysteries of fruitfulness. The mysteries of restoration. The mysteries of peace. Show me the key, oh God, to making things work in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, look up. Let me tell you sincerely, and I want to tell you this with all humility. Most of the graces you will need to produce the results that you need are available in this house. It's just that many of us have not had the discernment to tap. I'd like you to cry to God and say the grace that is deficient in my life that is responsible for this stagnation. I open up my spirit through honor. I open up my spirit through honor. Lift your voice. Pray this with wisdom. The grace for the gift of man. The ministry of helpers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of you inside, many of you outside are here now because of spirits. You may not believe it, you may not agree, but it's true. They are the forces responsible for the pain and the tragedies that we are going through. But I want to pray for you now. Your own is to believe. Just do what I'm asking you to do. We have already prayed. If those spirits do not clear out of your life, there is no breakthrough. You, you would have come to waste your time. Let me tell you the truth. It is when those forces leave your life families here spirits have sat on the destinies of families do your worst go to school and come back and meet us get a job and see come back and meet us marry and come back and meet us are we together it's time for them to go lift your hands everyone I want to pray for you now I'm going to command those devils to leave you listen it's not a suggestion they must go they must leave you are we together now I'm praying for you please now because the ushers are doing their best the protocol is doing their best but there is only so much they may not be able to help people there are people outside please be your brother's neighbor if someone is under the anointing and is capsizing to enjoy himself, you can do well to help. Please, you can help at least manage. The ushers will come for it. Because this prayer I'm about to pray now is going to bring strange manifestations in people. I see a lot of wild spirits, wicked, ancient spirits. All shapes and all sizes, they must go now. Just one instruction. I just want you to shout when I ask you the name of Jesus once and at the top of your voice. Now listen, don't be surprised when you find out that demons are manifesting through you. It doesn't mean you are possessed. No, that's a different thing altogether. Some of you as you are here, you are representing your family. Nothing may be wrong with you as a person, but because of your family. Are you ready now? Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have anointed this place as a place of fire a place of grace and deliverance there are lives and destinies that have been tied down for ages and in the name of jesus at the sound of my voice 
may your voice be in my voice may your grace be in my voice i send an alarm to the length and breadth of this place that at the count of three anyone that shouts that name let there be deliverance right now are you ready one two three i command those devils go now go now ancestral spirits spirit husbands spirit wives yokes of darkness i command you by the power of the holy ghost ancient spirits spirits that have been generational familiar spirits i command you now by the anointing of the holy ghost overflow one overflow two overflow three let them go now let them go now lift your hands lift your hands i'm seeing a number of ladies there are all kinds of spirits manifesting in the night as a man and a woman manifesting as animals in your sleeps and dreams in the name of jesus where are those ladies fire is looking for them now i separate you from those spirits i separate you from those covenants i separate you from those ordinances any man any woman any entity appearing to you in the night using the faces of men and animals in the name of jesus i command by the spirit a severance between you and them hallelujah sir this baba can i talk to you sir please come god is about to change your story forever i don't know you sir but i want to pray for you stand up please stand up sir i'm looking at you in a vision and i'm seeing you are not alone you came with some people your children one one child your son eh? only you no there's a son he's here where is he come come and stand daddy i want to pray for you that this life of hardship god one please stand up please stand up you don't have to kneel down sir this is your dad i want to pray for you you came believing eh august is it augustus i'm hearing the name augustus augustus is it augustus is it augustus augustine or something augustus please if that's your name let me just talk to you quickly I want to minimize personal prophecy so that we can do much. We want to pray for the sick. I want to take out time and do an extensive deliverance tonight because there are people that... My sister, come. This lady, this one, not you. You are not a woman, my brother. This, come. Lift your hands. Shout over. Over. Forever in the name of Jesus Christ for you and your family. It's over in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir. If you have never believed a man of God in your life, what is about to happen to you? There is a reason why I ask you to come because the Lord showed me that there was a son. And I want to prophesy to you that this life of hardship will end like smoke before the wind. You believe it, sir? Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus, it's over right now. I stretch my hands and I decree and declare that it's over. In the name of Jesus, over forever. Sir, hold my hands. Go and prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. Go and prosper by the anointing of the Spirit of God. Go and prosper. Gabriel, who is Gabriel? Gabriel, I'm hearing the name Gabriel. Please let's hurry up so that we don't waste time. Gabriel, Gabriel. Is he Gabriel? What's your name? Huh? 
Augustine, come. You are Gabriel. Why is he here? Augustine, I want to pray for you. Where's your family? My dad is around. Is that... Hold on. There's a man wearing white. Is he your father? White shirt. Call him. Let him come. Who is that? Who is that? There's somebody. I'm seeing somebody wearing white. What's, please coordinate them. What? You're welcome, sir. Your name is Gabriel, sir. I'm going to pray for you. Please stand here. I want to pray for you. This is the guy wearing white. Come. What is he? My brother. Your brother. Come and stand. God wants to change your life. I don't know you, but I saw someone standing close to you wearing white. That's why I said there's somebody wearing white. Two of you, I want to pray for you. You love Jesus. God is going to change your life. Why is he here? Your name is Gabriel too. You too. I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, my God. Honestly, I tell you, God is visiting families. I don't know if it's because it's first October, but I see strange miracles. You, this one, put your hand on your stomach there. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing fire coming on you. And the Lord is, I should tell you, he's taking something away from your stomach. That's what is happening right now. In the name of Jesus, I command that thing to go now. My brother, there is oppression. There's a spirit that you need to be delivered from. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Out now of his life and his family. Help two of them. God is delivering them. This is the spirit that is destroying their family. What's your name, sir? Augustine. Augustine. Where's the other Augustine? Okay, you are the one. You are the Augustine. Where are you from? Abia State. Abia State. Yes. I want to pray for you. God wants to give your family a miracle. Do you believe that? Lift your hands. There's bad luck in your life. The Lord is asking me to end it now. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands. I end bad luck. Over. The boy doesn't even believe. As you are standing, the anointing still touch you, but it doesn't have faith. Don't come and stand here and you are wondering. I'm not a herbalist. Have I prayed for you? What's your name? Yetu. Yetu. What is Yetu? I'm seeing Y E. Is it Y E T U or Yetu or Yetu? Something like that. Yetu. Something that has to do with Yetu. Y E T U. I don't know if it's part of someone's name or something. Yetu. Who is that? That's her name. What's her name? Yetu. Can you imagine? How can you call somebody's name Yetu? You can guess Gabriel, you can guess Mary. But Yetu, I want to pray. There's something being taken from her life. Hold my hands. And the Lord is saying I should take it away. In the name of Jesus, let it roll like a curtain. And leave her life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is of the devil. And I release your wife right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Your miracle has come. Your miracle has come. You love Jesus, my friend. Look at me. You love Jesus. I want to pray for you. Ah. In the name of Jesus. Why is she here? Your dad. There is a copper that I want to pray for. There is a copper. Something is coming on you, my dear. Let me pray for you. Don't worry. If, I, if all I do, I, I just lay my hands on you. Um, it, it doesn't matter. Please, why are you here? You are Gabriel? Gabriel, in the name of Jesus Christ, let me pray for this guy. God is giving you favor. Great favor. Great favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's, there's bad luck in your life and your family, but it's going now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's going. That's why you're here. Gabriel. Aleku is there. This is like an idol. Oleku or Aleku. Eh? 
Aleku. Aleku, who is that? Eh? Hold on. Where are you from? Aleku. This is something that has to do with a tree. Is there something like that? He said, What? Why are they coming out? What is why are you? They named somebody after the idol, and the Lord is saying, who, who is the person? Whose name? This is it's not just an idol. We are going to pray for Benway State. But the, every state has a devil somewhere. I'm saying this is like somebody's name. Ale, Ale Ku or Ale something like that. Ale Ku or so. Who is this? Huh? What's that? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. What's your name? Eh? Grace. Please, can you help us with this mic? The mic, please. Where are you from? Benway. You are from Benway. Yes. The Lord is showing me something. Look at me. If I'm right, say I'm right. If, if it's no, say no. I'm seeing you lying down and you are having a dream. Yes. And in the dream, they are calling this name I've been calling. Yes. Is that true? They call that name three times. One, two, three. That idol. Is that true? Yes, sir. From that day when you woke up, your life was never the same again. Is that true? Give her the mic now. Let her talk. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Look at me. Hold my hands. If you are from Benway here, hold my hands. Anything, any programming that has been done with any God You'll be surprised what will happen now. In the name of Jesus Christ, anyone here from Benway whose destiny has been tied to any tree or any devil, right now, I use this lady as a point of contact. As God is touching her, Shakato Totokata, Breketo Skote Satariatosia, Leketabosh, out of their lives now, out of their destinies now. Daddy, let me pray for you, sir. This is your first time here? No, sir. I've been coming, sir. You've been coming, sir? Yes. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? Sir? What do you do? I'm a staff of a medical in I have to pray for you, sir. Because I look at you, and not, not only because I'm looking at you, nobody will look at you and know, but there's serious depression, and I have to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, you have, do you know what they call the cause of hardship? You are not a lazy man, but there is hardship in your life. And the Lord is asking me to help you. Can I pray for you, sir? In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray for this, our daddy. Let there be a miracle right now in his life. I command this yoke of hardship to go. Let it go forever. In the name of Jesus, let it go forever. Jumai, Jumai. Jumai, is that your name? Uh, well, I'll pray for you, but this is not the person I'm seeing. Jumai, I'll pray for you. Your family is oppressed. There is a spirit that must go now. Bring her. I've not even started praying. Bring her. There is a, a, a wicked spirit that I see in this family. A very wicked spirit spirit that I see in this family this is something that is older than older than old this is hundreds of years old but in the name of Jesus I'm praying now I use you as a point of contact I command that spirit you must go now hallelujah please just allow me 
this is Juma, I'll pray for you. But I'm seeing a family. This is like a curse. No matter what the men do, they never rise. The Lord is saying I should break it. Something is happening to a family right now. Let me pray. My sister, this is your first time here. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Don't be afraid. As I pray for you, the Lord is going to open a door in your destiny that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus, I hold your hands now and decree and declare that everything that has tied you down, everything that has tied you down, right now in the name of Jesus, there is disfavor in your life. Anybody who plans to bless you, something turns them away from you. Anybody who plans to bless you, something turns them away from you. I hold your hands and I release you right now. In Jesus name I want to pray in a hurry there is a family all the men it doesn't matter whether you are hardworking whether you go to school or not but the Lord is asking me to pray for that family right now Lord where are they I'm stretching my hands now and I'm declaring anyone here inside outside under the sound of my voice that belongs to this category as I stretch my hands right now, I release the power of God to that family right now. I speak to the men in that family, arise now. Arise now, arise now. Arise now, arise now. Help that woman, arise now. Arise now. The men in that family, arise now. Arise now in the name of Jesus. There's somebody here, you lost your job in the month of March. March, you lost your job. Please, where is that person? You were working, but in the month of March. I want us to hurry up. I, I'm, I'm trying to see that we conserve time. The month of March. I don't know if you are, except if he's a person in his family, maybe overflow tree. Then they can just locate him. You lost your job. There's something, you lost your job in the month of March. Where is that person? Please quickly, if there's someone like that. What were you doing? I was a banker. I was a banker. You were a banker? Yes, sir. Something happened? Yes, sir. And they dismissed you? Yes, sir. What are you doing now? I'm doing my PG program for now. Do you believe if I pray for you, you'll get a job? Yes, sir. Will you come and testify? Yes, sir. <laughs> Where? Where have you been praying for? Ah, sorry. Where have you been praying for for a job? Uh, same bank. Bank the same job. bank. Same bank. You want them to call you back? Yes, sir. Do you believe they can call you back? Sure. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Because you see, I'm looking at something that had to do with money, and truly the guy was innocent. But they just joined people and since there was nobody to stand for him they joined everybody and threw them out but in the name of jesus whatever should not leave you and left you i call it back to your life now i call it back to your life now i call it back to your life now hear me I know many of you may not. Why is he here, sir? Come. Well, stand up, sir. You were outside? Yes, overflow three. Overflow three. Yes. You sir. lost your job. Where were you working? I'm working in a hospital. Which As hospital? An Which hospital? Tukutuku Medical Center. So that, you see. We don't ask this question because we are prying into your privacy. I hope you are not embarrassed. Sometimes we ask it so that people don't think that this thing, because there are still people with all these things they see, they still believe that maybe someone is playing games. At least this one is not, you are watching it now. Which hospital, sir? Tukutuku Medical Center, Zaria. At uh, Tukutuku. Okay, where are you working now? I'm just, I'm managing with one private school. What do you want God to do for you? Just Get back the job. Back to that place. No, 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 no. Another job, sir. 
another job. Yes. Do you believe if I pray for you, God will give you a job? I believe that. Do you know why I'm prophesying to you in the open? So that you will testify in the open too. What's your name, sir? I'm Paul. Paul. Yes, sir. God will give you a job, eh? Amen. The heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord. Listen. So when it has to do things there, we don't legislate. We make petitions. But the earth has he given to the sons of men. I give you a job now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. You will go and return with him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, how many of us are trusting God for healing miracles? Or came with loved ones that are really sick? Okay, we have a lot to do. So what will happen is, we'll take a break now to minister very quickly to the sick. And then after that, I'm still going to minister to people shortly before we do the final prayer. Will that be okay? Now, but while we are doing that, please, no laziness. There will be prayer points. Are we together? There will be prayer points. Once the prayer point comes, pray. Because in that prayer point, you will receive your miracle. Praise the Lord. But don't sit down yet. I'm, I'm not walking around, but I just want to. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord directing me to someone. There is, there is something that we must settle here. I'm seeing an anointing going around this place. I'm seeing an anointing going around this area. There is oppression over someone's destiny. That's the lady. In the name of Jesus, I command that devil to go now. You must let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bring her out. There's no space here, right? Please, don't push them. Don't push them. We are coming back. Just take her out to wait for me. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? I want to get you to Mama, I want to get you to the house. I want to get you I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Let it be over now. That oppression, let it be over by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is where I'm coming to. In the name of Jesus. Hold on. Hold on. In the name of Jesus. I saw light moving across here. And God wants to visit a family right now. Three of them. One, two, three. Where are they? Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the visitation come now. No hiding. The Lord must touch them. That's why you came. The Lord must touch you. Casting crowds, lifting hands, bowing hearts, that's all we come to do. Let her go now. Casting crowds, out, lifting hands, bowing hearts, that's all we come to do. In your name. That girl, look at me. Shout Jesus. Something is tying you. Let it lose you now. I stretch my hands to you. Let it be over now. Hallelujah. Now please, for those of you coming here for the first time, we take our time. We, you see that we don't announce instant miracles except because we don't have the time. Our time is very limited. Praise the Lord. Now this is what we are going to do. Um, while I give you the prayer request, please listen carefully. Those, please listen carefully. I want to pray particularly. Particularly. No matter what overflow you are in. If you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Don't come now. But when it's time to come, I want you to come. I want to pray for you by myself. But any other issue, those inside, I want you to come stand here. And then parts of Overflow 2, maybe half of Overflow 2 can join them. Now Overflow 1, please you go to your projector stand. Overflow 2 and those spilling over at the roadside. You can move to the projector stand. Overflow 3. 
if God grants grace and there's time, I will just run and come and visit you briefly just to let you know we are together. Overflow 3, move to your projector stand. Hallelujah. And we are going to pray very quickly. Please, if they don't prophesy to you or they don't minister to you, don't worry. We have to pray quickly so that I will focus and do other things. I want everybody to receive. Will that be fine? But those who are trusting God for fruit of the womb, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, wherever, I like you to please come. Those online, doesn't matter any nation, those following us online, doesn't matter your nation, you're trusting God for a miracle. I want you to connect right now by faith. Hallelujah. So we're going to do three things at the same time. Number one, you're going to be submitting your prayer request to the ushers. Number two, you're going to be praying the prayers that I'll give you while preparing our faith. And then number three, we'll come out. Is that all right? Praise the Lord. So let's do that very quickly. Very quickly, please. You're trusting God or you came with a sick person. Now is your time to come out, please. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Jesus, we bless you. I don't know. You reign. Casting crowds, lifting hands, bowing hearts, is what we've come to do. Casting crowds, we are lifting hands, bowing hearts, is what we've come to do. It's in your name. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave her now. Leave her now. In the name of Jesus. Can you lay your hands on her, Jimmy? Just on her chest or anywhere. Just touch her there. In the name of Jesus, I decree. I curse that spirit. You go and you go forever. In the name of Jesus. Now this is what will happen. Please, we are going to be very fast. We have to be fast. You see that there are lots of people. Uh, our miracle services. If you came with someone, uh, just be patient. We are going to attend to them. Praise the Lord. Thank God we have, uh, we have many hands. And by the grace of God, we will coordinate. We will make it very fast. Ushers, please be collecting the prayer requests. If your loved ones are yet to send their own, send them a text quickly. And she can join the queue. Just keep them somewhere. I'm going to lay my hands on them. Praise the Lord. How many overflows do we have? There's an extra overflow I see by the road. It has spilled over. Maybe overflow four. You can, uh, let's see. Ah. We have to be fast. Praise the Lord. Okay, this is what will happen. Um, Pastor Jimmy will be at the overflow outside here. Pastor Alpha, you'll be at the overflow here. Benga, you would go to overflow three. Uh, is there someone outside here? Who is outside here? Pastor Alpha is outside. Um, promise. Promise you will be here with Pastor Alpha. And then um, Pastor Femi, you'll be with um, you'll be with Benga right there at the overflow. Inside here, I don't know how many people are left. And by God's grace, God will grant us grace and we'll have a lot more people to be able to minister. Okay, Kenny. Kenny, join join um, a Jimmy. You join a Jimmy there. I think that's that's all right so far. Let's let's just trust God for grace. Father, we agree in the name of Jesus Christ that for everyone we are praying for, it doesn't matter who lays hands on them, let there be miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
Let there be miracles. The devil is a liar. Let there be miracles. In the name of Jesus. Put your hand on your stomach, my dear. I want to remove something from your body now. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit, that devilish spirit. Father, let there be miracles in Jesus' name. Please, let's go very quickly. We will need more hands. I don't know if we we'll still have people. I know they may. Aaron, what if you are not doing anything? Please, if you can help out in Overflow 3 with them so that at least we can help to coordinate things there. Praise the Lord. Father, let there be an avalanche of miracles here right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please worship him. You're going to give us, we're going to pray one prayer first. I'd like you to decree and declare and say, Father, I prophesy over myself that my miracle locates me now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Father, we give you all the praise. Do what only you know how to do. Come and change my story. Give me a testimony Do what only you know how to do Can I hear you say do what only you know Do what only you know how to do Can you lift up a voice and say Do what only you do know Do what only you know how to do Hey, I'm a change I'm a change my story Give me a testimony
Tonight is my night of testimony. Shaka toko to prekete kata. Shaka pas kata prekete kosh. Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Pray, lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus, we declare. Make sure you are praying. Lord, I decree and declare. I will not write this twice. I will not write this twice. Lord, we decree and declare. Miracles. Miracles. Are you praying? Miracles. Visit families. There are still more that should come quickly. Ha po koto pro koto sekete balalaba. Pray shekata barato. You ancient Zion skin, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion skin, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Mighty in this land. Are we done? Are all the requests here, please? In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, I bow my knees before the God of my covenant and I decree and declare that every request placed here. I turn it to a testimony now. I turn it to a testimony now. Strange testimonies now. Strange testimonies now. Lord, I cry that you step in and do impossible miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, let me tell you. There are things written here that except the writer if you read it you won't even believe that it can happen but i pray the god who has the all-seeing eye that can see every request a representation of every man's pain here i call on that god answer by fire answer by fire father there are issues here that are impossible with men. Some of them have deadlines that cannot be achieved humanly. But in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I prophesy, let there be strange miracles. Strange miracles now. For all those connecting from whenever nation, in the name of Jesus, we agree with you here. The same fire that is on this altar, through the internet, to your various localities, you receive the same testimony in the name of Jesus. Every human agent that must partner with God for this request to be granted, we force them from their hiding places to appear now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Whoever must die for this request to be answered, in the name of Jesus, the ground opens and swallows them. Whoever must lack sleep for this request to be granted, we seize their peace and their sleep now. Hear me? Any mortal man that says over his dead body for you to testify, may God answer their prayers this night. The Lord is opening my eyes. I know they are still ministering outside. Let's be patient. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing trees. I'm seeing trees in the realm of the spirit. And I'm seeing these trees. It's like a representation of families. Hold on please. I'm seeing these trees like a representation of families. And I'm looking at it. I've never seen a tree bringing out blood, human blood. But in this vision, I'm seeing a tree, but I'm seeing human blood. This is like a representation of families. I decree and declare. I don't know what family the devil is taking advantage of, but I want to pray now. I'm not prophesying. I'm speaking for, for God to locate a family that must not go back this night in this situation. Lord, I decree and declare wherever that family is, right now in the name of Jesus, may the fire of God locate that family now. May the fire of God locate that family now. The Lord is releasing an anointing. Hold on. Over people. It's for supernatural clarity and direction. That's what I hear. Receive it now. People are receiving it. People are receiving it. I prophesy. Clarity. Clarity. God is answering questions now. By the anointing. If that fire comes on you, you are receiving direction right now. Clarity. Clarity. All the overflows. Clarity. I release that anointing right now. God is giving clarity. Listen, I'm still praying it. I'm seeing anointings that will translate as answers. Should I stay here or should I relocate somewhere else? Should I start the project or should I stop? Every confusion and anointing is answering it now. An anointing is answering it now. An anointing is answering it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm praying for everybody but I'm seeing particularly overflow one. An anointing for divine recovery divine recovery let me tell you something whatever leaves you can come back to your life are you hearing now there are people who have lost things I'm about to call it into your life now and as that anointing comes on you just know that it's your time of recovery Lord where are they where are those who have lost things that need recovery shakata kata kata everywhere 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 inside outside outside the grace for recovery the grace for recovery i release that grace now over individuals and over families over individuals and over families individuals who have lost things lost things lost opportunities lost opportunities somebody is recovering an opportunity somebody is recovering something that left you hallelujah the angel of the lord is leading me here there are at least four people this grace for recovery must come upon you i'm seeing at least four people something you have lost is about to look for you something you have lost must look for you 
I force it to look for you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you. I told you God answers you by bringing the anointing in your direction. That collision with the anointing is what will program your testimony. And all of a sudden you will see strange testimonies happening to you. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a strong man in four families that God is clearing out of the way. Listen, listen. I don't say things like this lightly, but I'm seeing at least I'm seeing two women and two men who have sat for long on the destinies of people. They don't even know they are the ones. Where are they? Shakatos keta, brakatos gakatekatos. Inside and outside, whoever, in the name of Jesus, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, any man sitting on anybody's destiny here you want to rise but they stop you you want to move but they sit on your glory i clear them out of the way now listen you should attend a miracle service like this and know that you attended a miracle service like this mama you see that the devil wants to kill this woman with cancer. Eat her into pieces with cancer and destroy her. Your mother, you are the ones who brought her. Hold the mother and two of you come. You, two of you need deliverance first. Leave mama, come, come and stand. Someone should hold or get a seat for mama to sit. I've prayed for her, but I'm looking. I'm, this, is, this is your mother, two of you. I want to pray for you, eh? What you need, I know you brought your mother to be healed of cancer, but for you, God must heal you first. You will need deliverance. Eh? I'm not saying you are witches, but I have to pray for you. This is the instruction God is giving me. Father, in the name of Jesus, you will not allow these ladies to go down the way of trouble and sorrow and pain and discouragement. Therefore, I lay my hands on you. In the name of Jesus, fire over every wicked devil in the name of Jesus you came to stand in for your mother but Satan has his own plan for you in the name of Jesus Kai. wickedness is real I held these ladies and the Lord showed me a vision I'm seeing a man a real herbalist sitting down on the ground and I'm seeing something that looks like a pot. They are writing names of people with blood. Blood, not chalk. They will write it and throw it inside the pot. Write it and throw it. This is an Igbo family. Write it, throw it inside the pot. Lord, I don't know why you showed me this vision. But in the name of Jesus, I don't care where the family is. But in the name of... First, my first prayer point is that that herbalist must die first. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't like the prayer point, say amen to the one you believe. But my first prayer point is that the wicked herbalist, this is someone's destiny. These people are here. Oh, I'm praying. You may not even know you are the one. I say it again. Whoever is that man on the ground writing whose name? Whether it's your marital destiny, whether it's your breakthrough, in the name of Jesus, let the earth open and swallow that wicked man. Who say now? Who say now? Who say now? Who is that, please? Let her come, please, quickly. You are Husena. What's your name? Huh? Husena, I want to pray for you. Eh? I'll pray for two of you, but you are the one I want to pray for. What's your name? From where? What state are you from? FCT. You are from FCT. Do you believe in favor? Shout it. 
No, you are not shouting. You have shouted. Wow. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a lot of bad luck for you and your family and this is what God is bringing for you. Favor. Who say now I want to pray for you? You are who say now to madam? Please come. You too? Is it mother and daughter or you are coming by yourself? You are, you are who say now to? I'll pray for you. But this is the lady I want to speak to. You love Jesus with all your heart. I want to pray for you. God is bringing a major breakthrough for you and your family. Major breakthrough. I lay my hands right now and I command it. Let it happen right now. In the name of Jesus. Where are you from, my dear? Jalingo. Taraba. In the name of Jesus. The Lord gives you a miracle. Now. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Every bad luck must live your life now. Eh? Every bad luck must live your life. I lay my hands and I command that spirit to go. This lady, only bad things look for her. There are people like that. When good things come, they just turn. There is a spirit that turns it away. Everybody is getting a job. Something that is simple. When is your turn? Let me tell you something. Hardship is not poverty. Hardship is a spirit. You get things, but something you can get for two weeks will take you four years. It's hardship. It's a cost. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You can't go, give God glory under that kind of condition. Simple things. You ask somebody out, I want to marry you. They answer you after four years. It's a cost. Are you, are you a demon? It's a cost. You start a building project, you finish after 10 years. It's not a blessing. A hard life is worse than poverty. This is what the devil has put on the life of this lady. I, I take it away now. In the name of Jesus. And I use her as a point of contact. If there is anything on anyone's head that is responsible for bad luck happening. In the name of Jesus. I command whatever it is. Let the fire of God come upon it now. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus. I lay my hands upon you and I release favor. In the name of Jesus. Favor. I'm seeing someone. You are into printing. Please, let's hurry up. We have to stop a few minutes now. So that you are into printing. You print like... Um, posters whatever it is you design you print banners please who is that person i want to pray for you you are into printing uh, i will pray for you but the person i'm seeing i'm not saying if you want to do it if you are currently doing it you are into it for how long since my, my child was up I was born into printing. Your father is a printer? Yes, sir. Where do you do it? Mina. Mina. Yes, sir. From Mina, you came here? I'm serving in, in Kadzara. Because the person I'm seeing is about to lose a lot of money. This is a contract or project that someone will give you. You will suffer and do it and something will happen and destroy that whole job. And the person will say you must pay. And it's going to cost you hundreds, I don't know, well may not be so much money to you but i'm seeing something losses of at least this is a very big project that the person is even angry i'm seeing something that even has to do with police because the person will say that he went and gave the job all of you are into printing what are you printing I'm into printing what printing books everything in every press books you yes. too your dad all of you, I'll pray for you. You are standing for somebody. We have to avert this. This time of recession is not the best time to get into trouble with police. Say amen. amen. We want to stop it now. So that whether it's your fault or not, when you are in trouble, you are in trouble. And you see, the way the devourer works is that he will wait just when I'm, I'm soon going to do that prayer. Where things work, just when the miracle is about to happen something happens and destroys your life i have to pray for you where is your dad huh? he, stays in abuja. he stays in abuja that's where you stay too yes what's your name peace peace i want to pray so that we'll stop trouble eh? in the name of jesus 
Daddy, we use your daughter as a point of contact to pray. Every trouble we avert now. You two, you are into the printing. Where? Abu Press. Abu Press. Yes, you work with Abu Press. Yes. Hey, you work there now. It's not your own. Okay, but I will still pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Grace. The one for me now. I release you. Eh? Can I pray for businesses? Yes, sir. Can I speak over businesses? Huh? You are into printing? Uh, what's your name? Hassan. 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 You, you, you need to... Um, well, I don't mean to embarrass you, but you are very shabby. Huh? You need to organize your life. You're a smart young man, but you see how you are looking like uh, a thief. You'll be smart when you are coming to the house of God. Listen, when you, people are, when you are coming to the house of God, don't embarrass him. This is a family, but you look smart. You don't dress, you see him no shoes your hair is scattered not combed you look smart eh? you are my friend i want you it will be difficult for you to progress in life like this it will be difficult for you to get a good wife like this it will be difficult for you to get many good things <laughs> appearance is the seed for acceptance don't say it doesn't matter dress well the house Organize his life in the name of Jesus Christ. Organize his destiny. There is a spirit of excellence. Excellence is a spirit. You receive it in Jesus' name. I'll quickly pray for you. Doesn't matter where you're standing. You, you are into printing too. You too. In the name of Jesus, all those into printing, I lay my hands, Pastor Lawrence, grace for you. You will do well. You will get jobs in Jesus' name. There are some of us, what we need now, we are at a point in our lives where humanly speaking, we have paid our price. What you need is favor. And we are going to pray it. Is that true? Are there people like that here? There are others you have not paid your price. Paying for favor is putting you into trouble. What I need to pray for you for is grace not to be lazy. Laziness is also a spirit. Many of us don't know. It takes a lot of laziness. Um, something is leaving you. That devil must go now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let her go by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are into printing too? In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is somebody you sew clothes. You are a serious tailor. But for a long time, this is from April, everything just went down. I don't mean gradually down like this it's almost as if please who is that person you are a tailor you sew clothes you are a serious tailor but something just happened i'm seeing the month of april and everything just went down you are the one you sew clothes where Yango. who knows you if you are a serious tailor they should know you here who are who, you've sewn people's clothes here Okay, Zango. Yes, there's a shop. I'm what ha then what happened? There's a shop. I'm working for somebody. So last month he sent me out and closed the shop for no reason. Last month? Yeah. Um, okay, I'll pray for you. If you did something wrong and they pursued you, when you come here, you ask for mercy. You don't complain. Even if it's my shop and you don't do well, I will drive you. Everybody wants to succeed. So let's, let's be very honest when we are before God. Praise God. When you are before God, if you tell the truth, that's even what will provoke his mercy. You understand? If, you, if, if I employ you, don't be embarrassed, my dear, but if I employ you and you are not bringing me anything and I'm paying you, why won't I downsize and drive you? So don't make it look as if because this person you are saying drove you. I'm not seeing the person as a wicked person. No. Something happened and it's your fault. Eh? You need the mercy of God. And God will help you. Don't make it. You see that if, if it's not revelation now, you will now blame someone else and say that person is wicked. My prayer for you is that God will bless you too. 
Huh? But please, don't be angry. I'm not seeing that person. That person did exactly what I would have done. Hmm? Father, in the name of Jesus, show your daughter mercy. If you need mastery, may God improve your skill. May God improve your value. And I pray for you in Jesus' name. God will not leave you hungry. The God we serve will change your story tonight. In the name of Jesus. You experience his mercy. You experience his grace. Madam, you are a tailor. Where? Samaru Market. Samaru. Market. You have your shop? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Yes, sir. You are a good woman, but you are always entering trouble with those you sold their clothes. You don't used to finish on time. Madam, I'm going to pray for you. The Lord is showing me. Don't be embarrassed. This is a family. It may just need... You are a very good tailor. I'm not, I'm not against you. Don't feel bad. I'll there's some people. That's what I'm seeing now. Yes, and there's problem now. They are even angry. Yes, sir. Because they are supposed to sew something for them for an occasion. Uh, and you didn't finish and now the person is really angry so these are some of the things we are talking about as God steps in let's allow his mercy just tell them sorry because you, are one, you would have been far more than you are now but there is a spirit of delay sitting on your glory hold my hands you must go now to draw from you again again yeah. We've come to draw, 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 draw from you again. Listen, I want you to mark this woman. The kind of favor this woman will enter into from this night will surprise you. I'm saying it in the open. The Lord will give you favor. You are a tailor. Why are you just coming, my brother? We're praying for people here. Father, in the name of Jesus, help our brother to succeed. Hmm? It's unbelief. If God is calling a case to help people, huh? you come out proudly. You don't stand there, you are ashamed. You understand? Sana, please. You are a student and you are doing it. You people too, you are tailors. See, the tailors are now coming out. We'll pray for your business. Please, all tailors, do a good job. We believe in excellence. Don't say, I'm praying for you publicly. It's not just endorsing you to destroy people's clothes. Do a good job. Praise the Lord. Do a good job and we'll pray for you. There are too many people here. Two school of ministry wants to do their graduation gown. In two weeks, we are graduating our students. 243 students. Imagine that you get the contract to do their gown. If you do a good work, God will honor you. If you do a nonsense work, people will not endorse you just because it's the house of God. Praise the Lord. My brother, you want to study? Where? Oh, you are a student? Yes. Be okay. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord grant you grace. God will raise help for you. In the name of Jesus, God will raise help for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are a tailor? In the name of Jesus, God will raise help for you. You need deliverance. I command the spirit. Hi, this lady, there's oppression in your dream. I set you free right now in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God. You didn't come out for tailor. You came out by the mercies of God. You see what I'm saying? This is the tailor now. You see what? Let me pray for her, please. I see a wild animal. I'm looking at this lady and I'm seeing Kai. Lord Jesus, mercy. I command every legal access Satan has over you. When this lady gets angry, she can swallow you. It's not her fault. It's a spirit. Be free now. Look how many people are holding one lady. In the name of Jesus, I set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me advise you. If you want to enter a relationship, pray. If you want to marry, pray. You listen to what I'm telling you. You see, the body of Christ, we don't listen. And we do. I'm not saying this lady is a witch. Please don't get me wrong. But I'm saying you should pray. Now, I'm not condemning her. But imagine that you're in a relationship with this lady. And you married last week. You see this? If this lady is angry, that spirit will manifest. No matter how strong you are, she will beat the living daylight out of you. When that spirit leaves her, she will tell you sorry. And then it will come back. 
this is what God is helping us to solve. Are we together? Now imagine you're a customer and just because you gave her 10,000, you insulted her. When that spirit rises, she will tear your clothes or beat you. Lord Jesus, we invoke your mercy upon her. In Jesus' name. Madam, you're a tailor too? Where? Judge. Judge. I'll pray for you. You're a tailor too? Where? You're a natural state. In the name of Jesus, may God increase you. I speak to your business. Let it increase. Experience increase. Delay lives your life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you're in business, please lift your hands. I want to speak over your life. Please believe the prayer I'm praying for you. There is an anointing that makes people prosper. Why are you here? You are tailors. You are all tailors. What do you mean you are tailors? This gentleman, you are a tailor too? Okay, please come. You would have come out since so that our time, you know, our time. You are all tailors. You are a tailor too? I hope we all know that this is the house of God. Please, don't, don't tell lies. If you are not a tailor here, I'm, the prayer will reach everybody. If you are not into tailoring, please don't embarrass yourself. If you are into tailoring, leave them, leave them, please. Provided you are, I don't know what is this with God and tailors, but let's pray because God wants to increase you. You look like a tailor. You see, some of you don't look like tailors. You are, you, are not, you are not dressing like tailors. This gentleman is sharp and smart. He looks like a tailor. Ejimi teaches that you represent your brand. If you are a man of God, you show it by the anointing. If you are a tailor, if you are a public speaker, you show it by accuracy of communication. If you are a tailor, you are marketing your products at all times. You don't say, come to my shop. No. If I cannot see your tailoring prowess on you, then I shouldn't patronize you. Father, change the lives of these great people of ours. I'm just going to lay my hands and touch your head. And in the name of Jesus, I pray, may your business step into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus. As I lay my hands, please go back to your seat. In Jesus' name, that yoke leaves you now. In the name of Jesus, grace for you grace for you grace for you go and increase go and multiply my dear go and increase go and multiply increase madam multiply go and increase go and multiply go and multiply go and increase go and multiply go and increase go and multiply go and increase whether you're a tailor or not, after this you don't come out again. Go and multiply. Go and multiply. In the name of Jesus. Go and multiply. Go and multiply. In Jesus' name. If you're in business, please. Any kind of good, godly business, lift your hands. If you're in a bad business, repent. And do something honorable. Listen, let me mention an example of bad business. Any business that has to do with smuggling drugs, you are a thief. You are not in business. You stop it. I don't care whether you are helping young guys around Samaru connect with a snuff. That's not a business. Are we together? There are businesses that are demonic. Writing exams for people. Writing jam for people. Writing, I will never pray for you for increase. That's not a godly business. Business that has to do with you having an affair with somebody's husband, somebody's wife. It's not a good business. Prostitution, not a good business. Dirty business that has to do with ungodly things, no. No, sir. Let's be very sincere before God. But I pray sincerely from the depth of my heart. The power to prosper. The grace that can come on a business and turn it around overnight. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Listen, please, I want you to be childlike enough and believe this prayer I'm praying for you. And watch what God does. Some of you, you don't have any clients, you don't have any customers. Some of you overnight, just by this prayer, 
by miracle service october it will be like a dream i prophesy to you some of you you have the ideas what you need is capital i declare let somebody rise up who is willing to help you in the name of jesus christ some of you what you need is an endorsement of someone credible in your field so that it will open doors for you may someone who has gone ahead of you accredit you in the name of jesus christ some of you are trying to sell properties there's nobody to buy but if someone comes to buy it god will use it to honor you i call somebody to buy it now in the name of jesus now i prophesy favor on everyone i decree and declare tonight the main auditorium overflow one two three those following online the kind of favor you have never seen in your life may my god make it happen in your life now receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus Esther the village girl became Esther the queen through favor Ruth the hungry woman who was about to die became Ruth the wife of Boaz I don't know who I'm prophesying to but the favor that would change your story in one month I release it to you right now I release it to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ help that woman there please there are people from January till now you have never testified. It's not that you don't want to come out, but nothing has happened. I stand before the God of heaven and I decree and declare, may my God do something in your life that will force you to come and testify. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare, I don't know what door has closed between you and your next level you have been knocking for a long time and that door has refused to open I open that door for you right now I open that door for you right now any terminal disease ravaging anyone's body you get healed right now two weeks you are back again you get healed three weeks you are back again I set you free right now help that I set you free right now in the name of Jesus Christ the only thing you know that happens in your family is fight and quarrel no love no joy when someone is about to rise a troublemaker comes I declare may the Prince of Peace May the Prince of Peace step into our homes now. Step into our families now. You are beautiful. You love God. You are a well-mannered lady. No husband. Jakotos kaparakata. Skalabata kato sata priyata. Sheketo koto I'm led to pray this prayer. You don't hear me pray it all the time. But I decree and declare. Every lady here. Ready for a relationship a godly one i call your husband to your life now every gentleman who wants to marry but no job no money the devil is <laughs> the devil is using lack of finances to rubbish your life in the name of jesus the God that can lift a man from a dunghill, may that God lift our brothers here right now. Any project you started this year that you were hoping to have completed by now, and as it is, you need a miracle, I release the finisher's anointing upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. All those writing exams, Shakatos Kata Prati Alakatos. In the name of Jesus, 
the grace to not only write your exams but to finish well i release it upon you right now in the name of jesus christ all our, our brothers and sisters who travel from several places to write post you and me in the name of jesus we give you admission here i don't care who you know or who you don't know we give you admission here now hallelujah school of ministry students are writing their exams by nine o'clock tomorrow in the name of jesus grace for retention receive it There are other people writing promotion exams others there are, we have a lot of postgraduate students doing their phd work research you know their thesis whatever it is anything that has refused to come to completion in your life i re i release upon you grace for completion in the name of jesus the last prayer point and we're done give me two minutes i need to pray for our spiritual lives some of you started well with God, but right now you need prayers. You need serious prayers. Prayers, zero. Fasting, zero. Word life, zero. Passion for the things of God, zero. You are not bad, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying. The fire. The Bible says the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. The fire that must come upon the candle of your destiny. Sokoto Pakata. From the main hall here overflow one overflow two overflow three take a fresh fire for your work with god take a fresh fire for your work with god hear me some of you the moment you open your bible it's as if something happens and you close it back it's not normal i decree and declare passion for the word of god receive it right now some of you used to pray seriously you even used to attend the the weekly prayer department meeting but things happen you were offended with god and several things happen in your life and you say I'm, i've been praying but i've not seen result and you stop i release upon you grace to go back grace to go back to the prayer altar grace to go back to the prayer altar grace to go back to the prayer altar hear me those of you who as you are seeking money you are forgetting god as you are seeking marriage you are forgetting god it's not that you want to do so life is pushing you away from god whatever is drawing you away from god i call starting now listen we're rounding up god and prosperity can go hand in hand god and marriage can go hand in hand whatever must make you leave god to get it is of the devil may it live your life forever now keep your hands lifted the last prayer point god is looking for men and women of the spirit simple one minute prayers that will change your life now lift your hands i want to pray for something to come upon these hands listen Mm. there must be an evidence if you belong to this ministry this is a supernatural ministry this is a ministry of signs wonders diverse manifestations i will not end this meeting without this impartation i'm praying now at the count of three let an unction let an ancient mantle land on someone's hand one two three Take it now. Healing anointing. Take it now. Prophetic mantle. Take it now. Grace for signs and wonders. Receive it. May your hands become healing hands. May your hands become miracle hands. Deliverance hands. Favor hands. hear me the grace to win souls like never before 
I know it's old school. I'm both old and new school. Depending on the one that does not work. So winning is never old school. The Bible says he that winneth souls is wise. I pray for you. Grace for a dimension. Evangelism through signs and wonders. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. The last prayer for you. The mantle of honor. The grace that distinguishes a man above his contemporaries. I lay my hands on my head and I prophesy to you. Carry that anointing right now. Carry that anointing right now. Experience strange levels of honor. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise. every expectation you brought here whether i mentioned it or not i'm agreeing with you now within 24 hours let your miracle start within 24 hours let your miracle start those of you who came from far before you get to where you came from you will collide with miracle after miracle testimony after testimony hallelujah if there is anyone here in ministry a man of god a woman of god you have a fellowship you have a church i pray for you the fire that is here carry it back to your church carry it back to your fellowship carry it back to your place of ministry in the name of jesus christ hallelujah wave your hands and give jesus praise thank you lord jesus Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Everyone, keep standing. You are here. Our time is gone. Everyone, please stand. You are here. You are worshiping with us for the first time. Overflow one, overflow two, and inside. This is your first time. Please make your way here. Overflow three, just make your way to the front of your projector stand and look at me. Let's honor them, Koinonia, quickly. hallelujah praise the lord please keep standing two minutes we are done let's honor them they are coming may god bless all of you who continually invite people to come listen let me tell you one truth i am very honored to have the privilege to lead this campaign of bringing the reality of the power and the presence of God to people. When you invite people, you don't necessarily make a ministry bigger. Yes, you increase them in numerical strength. But the truth about it is that you are giving people an opportunity to have encounters. Hallelujah. For all of you who take out time to invite people, may the God I serve bless you. Clear the way for them as they come. Hallelujah. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you are watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain